What's going on, friends? You are here. It is Vape Stew. I think it said live late. I don't know. But what's going on, friends? Um, Tonight, we have a very special guest with us. It is our very own YouTuber, brand new YouTuber. His name is Dr. Amp. Say hello, Dr. Amp. What's up, guys? How's everybody doing tonight? All it's right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> also, tonight we got Demo in the house of Demo Vapes. Say what's up, Demo. What's up, everybody? It's Demo with Demo Vapes. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Should be a pretty awesome show. And last but certainly not least, the uh, the cool in our cucumber, Mr. Just Right One. What's going on, YouTube? I bet. Yes, I am. I promised y'all I'd be here tonight, man. It, through hell and high water, I'm here. There he is. Sadly, we All are right. missing Nick Bissett. We are missing Nick Bissett tonight, Daily Vape TV. He is um, doing grown-up things with grown-up people, and we are not those people. What is that? So, mean? Nick, if you're out there watching, what's up? And uh, we're drinking beer, bro. So let's go around the table let's do what we always do let's do a little buffet style what are we vaping on and uh how about a drink cool cool go ahead all right i'll start to kick it off there you go um yeah if you want to present me i'll go ahead and start um cool what's up guys um uh, tonight i'm drinking on something real simple i'm drinking on a templeton rye and uh cherry coke zero and just kind of keeping it simple. I didn't have any beer, so I was like, well, you know, I guess I'll do the next best thing. So got that. Um, I don't have nearly as many setups as I had last time. I have only four setups with me tonight. Um, got I busted out my old Twisted Messes 24. I, uh, I really wanted to, to, to try this out again, and I tossed in a set of interlocking alien frame staples that I made uh, just the other night in there, and uh, it's just a beautiful vape. Um, I've got the fix, cool melon pods, and the Elif Basal kit. I'm going to do a review on this for sure. Um, and the Dead Rabbit SQ on top of the uh, Asmodus Spruzza. So, you know, let's see if I can. Spruzza! Spruzza! See if I can double toot. That's a weird flavor combination. <laughs> um, and yeah, that's uh, that's about it for me tonight. What about you, Mr. Just Right? Man, what do you want me to start with? What I'm drinking or what I'm vaping? I do what feels right. Well, it's just right. It's always right. Man, guys, <laughs> today I'm going squonk out. That's it. Everything I got today is a squonk. I and got red, the... apparently. Yeah. <laughs> no, you don't say. <laughs> No, I got the uh, Nudge box with the Nudge 22 up top. I have the Stentorian Ram box with the Nudge 24 up top. The Azeroth by Cool Art and their little RDA up top. Then I got the G box by Geek Bait with the drop up top. And then, of course, I didn't go all pansy and all that other good stuff, guys. I went. All out. Everclear and Sprite. <laughs> Everclear. <laughs> <Whoa. God. laughs> and I even broke out my special red mug. So your Mardi Gras up there. Night, guys. Is that the 190 proof Everclear? 190 proof with Sprite makes it about 187.5 proof. <laughs> uh, 0.5 oh, I guess Joel. I guess Joel's <laughs> getting drunk tonight. That's the whole point. <laughs> All right. Mr. 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 I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you, Joel. No, you interrupted me. You did it on purpose. It's okay. I, I totally did. You, you've you had enough FaceTime. That's enough. <laughs> All right, Dr. Amp. Let's see what you got. All right, man. So I have been on a mouth to lung kick. And so I've been rocking the drag with a Nautilus on top. I picked this up at a shop for like 10 bucks a couple weeks ago. So, and I'm, I'm running it at like eight Watts. So it's a huge gross misuse of power, but I love it. I've got lava flow of the 50 milligram salt nick version in it. And I go through multiple tanks a day because I have problems. Uh, also rocking the jewel cool mint. Uh, I don't ever leave home without that. And then uh, my, my newest thing just came in the mail today, man, is the little foot 
kit by Wake Modco. Yeah. Um, has the Wake tank on top, uh, and it is filled with uh, Turkish maize by MTurk. So that is a butterscotch cornflake, which sounds like a very odd combination, but it is oh so good. And to drink, I've got uh, whiskey and Coke Zero Vanilla because I got to watch those calories. Then I also have uh, a uh, jug of a pre-mixed beverage over here. So if I'm still thirsty, I've got a backup. So you have a guest behind you. You got a sneaky cat. Yeah, she's been knocking stuff over, and <laughs> I have a. You can probably see I collect, you know, vinyl pops and toys and stuff like that. And uh, <clears throat> she's been on the other side just knocking everything off. And so I'm cringing on the inside and it's killing me. So yep. oh, we're about, oh, 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 there we go. <laughs> uh, that was He Man. He Man just took I'm off. <laughs> watching it in the, the corner of my screen. I'm like, man, what a great cat I have. Lovely cat. All right, guys. So while Nick deals with his uh, crazy stray cat or just enjoys him knocking things over or her knocking things crazy over. Stray, right. I Yeah, he, he collects stray cats. You didn't know that? That's not his cat. That's a stray. Oh, I just <laughs> Good. I go around with a bag and just throw them in. A plastic bag. Yeah. All right, so, guys. So, so I am going to hit up the real ale commissar. It is a Russian Imperial Stout, a 9.8% alcohol per volume. And I always like to do the pour on screen because it's just these dark stouts I've been into. Oh. Because you're just pretentious like that. Oh. No, it's like my only enjoyment I'm going to get uh, at, like right right this second. And then when I drink yeah, it. I was having a sexual experience right now. Oh, my gosh. I am. Look at, look at that. Look at that. And I did it such a good pour. Look. Look at that head. Mm, that's not even a nitro beer. That smells delicious. I can't wait to taste it. Um, but I'm not going to make you guys watch that. So tonight, I am vaping on the overpowered mod in 21700 mode with, what is that? Some a Lucid. Lucid RDA on top. Y'all know I have to have a Lucid rocking. It's got a .2 in it on a 21700, rocking about 20 amps or so. Also, Nectar Shake, Strawberry, some of that TFN uh, tobacco-free nicotine action because I've been enjoying it. I'm also rocking The Broadside, which is, uh, yeah, we're not going to talk about that. The Broadside with the Culverin on top and some chubby grape bubblegum. Delicious, delicious, delicious. Also, I am rocking the, what is this thing called again? The Bonza. The Bonza. The bloody bonza. No, that's not. That's not right. That's not, not the right. right. No, no. And uh, the NATO. Don't take offense to that, anybody. And uh, in that, I'm rocking some of this twisted tongue. I got a lot of setups tonight, guys. I'll, I'll go through it quick. I got some of this twisted tongue, the fix, which is like a strawberry blended fruit. And then I'm rocking the maze RDA on a parallel hooligan box um, with which you can't get these anymore. By the way, that they don't exist anymore. Uh, with what's in that nectar pear is in that also i am rocking the lupu 2 with the watofo bravo and inside that i am rocking this nectar shake mint holy crap i've never had a mint vape like i may may have not like i just don't try them that much but i've never had a mint vape that wasn't menthol this is freaking delicious. It tastes like mint chocolate chip ice cream. And last but certainly not least, I'm going to do these three at the same time. I've got the penguin with salt nix blueberry in there, which is delicious. I've got the uh, me pod with some 50 milligram clean vape. I don't remember the name of the juice. And then I've got my recoil rda on the dreamer stainless with some triple x from chain vapes and uh basically i'm rocking all this because i don't want to get up again and i don't know what's going to pair good with my beer probably none of it boom yes sir hold on i want to take one second here Stan, uh you got me... a lot of people asking about your shower curtain 
<laughs> my shower curtain really well that's just what we were about to do we we're going to take one second to jump into the chat and give some shout outs we can uh, definitely tell people what happened to the shower curtain it wasn't a shower curtain but it yeah sure it's fine it was curtain. a shower curtain um what we got what we got what's let me go through the chat here and say what's up to everybody angela garrity what's going on uh phil vapes chestina uh my friend chestina jack savage Kryptonim Dark Spee says, What's up? Fictitious character, James Franklin, Mike K. Tony Berry, uh, Eric Stockton, Mike Diamantino. He Diamantino. Says, <laughs> uh, Mitch is in the house. Sammy Nitro is in. I got all grown up with a new studio, he says. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bite me, Sammy. Um, <laughs> fictitious character. I already said hi to you. Who else is in here? Tony Berry, uh, that heart guy says, what up, ladies? Y'all looking mighty sexy. <laughs> uh, Mr. Hart, what's good, brother? That heart guy. I thought it was that art guy. I, I <laughs> Jeez, man, that's how much attention I pay. That heart guy. You know what? Is that the guy? Is that is that the Bravo guy? That, art, that heart guy? Is that the Bravo guy? I mean, uh, you don't know. I mean, I just, it says, I, I am the man. I did see Aaron Hart up at the top of the list, so I don't know. Okay. Um, Sifu Mustache says, my dreamer didn't show up today. I has the sads. Me too, because I really want you to have it, Sifu. Or... What? No, close the door. You don't know what we're talking about. You don't know what we're talking about. My wife's trying to get involved here. We should get her a camera. She's just say, let her, let her in. Come, have her come say hi. Chris, come say hi. Yeah, real quick. You should ask here. her. All I right. Well, tell she, her to do anything. She said, no, ask her. Times, but I'm going to tell you guys today is mine and my wife's 10 year anniversary of marriage. Uh, wow. So and you're here. That's, and I'm what here. What are you, you doing know, here? Really? She yeah. told me. Dumbass. To do it. She <laughs> told me to do it. That's woman's that why he had a bloody nose. Say no, no, now no. Now we know man. why he had a bloody nose. <laughs> I had a bloody nose because she punched me. That's what it took. She said, she said, you can do your live show if you let me punch you in the face. Somebody asked me to hold this up again. This is well, an extra shake. Congrats, sir. Thank you very much. We're going to celebrate tomorrow. That's why I'm here. Congrats. So, um, one more thing. Check it out. I want everybody to look. Look at this t-shirt. Just look at it. Just, just look at the awesomeness. You guys I, I see that? See your t-shirt. Not my t-shirt. Mr. Nick's t-shirt. Oh, the Lucid RDA. <laughs> Absolutely. All available at lucidrda.com. Yeah. <laughs> um, bye, bye, bye. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So um, tonight we are here to talk a little bit about – thank you very much, Jack Savage. Tonight we're going to talk a little bit about building. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about – uh, coils, pre-built coils, wicking. Um, we're going to let you guys ask questions throughout the show this time. We're not going to just uh, wait till the end. We want to get you guys involved this time. If you have uh, questions about building or or about what you think would be better or what wicks better, what tastes better, just any kind of questions about general coils, um, we, we that's what we've decided we're going to do tonight. So you guys go ahead and throw your questions in chat and we'll get to them as we go. Um, I know that Everybody has an opinion on these things. I know that all of us do different, th uh, vape differently when it comes to pre-built coils and pre-built, uh, what I call handcrafted pre-built coils, where you buy them made from somebody else, or you buy them from China from off a machine, or you just wrap round wire, or you just buy Chinese smoke TFV8 coils or whatever you do. So I want to start off with Demo because I know he's pretty heavy handed in the build game. And uh, this is like one of his bread and butter things. So go ahead, Demo. What do you think? Uh, where do you want to start off with this? Well, let me pull up my little list here because uh, we were we were kind of chatting about this earlier on our little chat group here. Um, I guess I want to, I actually really kind of wanted to start off by kind of taking the, the opinion of the room, both from you guys and everybody here in chat. Do you build? Do you buy pre-made coils? And if you do buy pre-made coils, do you buy the fancy ones from like MTurk or Fiends or, you know, any one of those other builders? Or do you go Chinese and, you know, get like the Geek Vape or Vandy Vape or, uh, you know, Coilology and stuff like that? And if, uh, and, and then if you, if you, or if you use sub-ohm tanks and you don't, you don't bother with it. So I'm just kind of curious. 
to see where we're all at because that'll help us tailor our, our show to what well, the people who are here. While they while they go ahead and throw those in there, why don't you guys each give us a little bit of uh, what you started with as opposed to what you do now? You don't have to necessarily go through the whole thing, but uh, give us a little sure a little insight. All right. Um, well, you know, for me, I started off with um, I started off with subbone tanks. Uh, I've been vaping for a little over a year now, and so I started off with an Aspire subbone tank situation, and the you know, it was it was fine and stuff. And I rocked sub ohm tanks for a while. I did. I had the Aspire Exo Nautilus, or no, it wasn't the Exo. It was the Atlantis Exo or whatever. It was the one that came with my kit. Then I had a Smoke TFV8. Um, you know, because that's what you do. And um, then I had a. <sighs> what, what did I have after that? I had an Aspire Cleto, and then wound up with an Avocado 24, and I bought pre-made wire. So. Um, and that kind of started my my kind of downward spiral through the through the building world or upward spiral, I guess if you will. And um, now I'm you know building, you know I just I just completed my first Enigma last night. Um, I my usual build are Alien Frame Staples. Um, I just I've been vaping a lot on interlocking Alien Frame Staples lately. So the build game has become huge with me. My build station is behind me. If you watch my videos, you see huge spools of wire all stacked up on my desk and stuff. So, um, you know, it's also why my desk is always messy because I'm always building and stuff. But, uh, yeah, so that's that's where I'm at now. What about you? Uh, let's go with Nick this time. Uh, well, I, uh, <laughs> I, went, I went to a really bad shop for my first setup, and I had an Atlantis V2 on a mech mod. Oh. And because uh, they had no idea what they were doing, and I didn't either. Uh, luckily, that same day, because I had killed the battery and I didn't know how to charge it, I uh, went to another shop to figure out what was going on, and I just bought another setup and again another uh, sub ohm tank. I think it was the I Taste Two, uh, but maybe a month into that, uh, I bought a noisy cricket and an indestructible because I really wanted an RDA, and that just looked really good to me. Uh, so I started out building my own. I still do uh, all the builds in this household. I have friends <laughs> that uh, when they come over and we're all hanging out, I will I'll do builds here. And, of course, it's just real basic stuff, just round wire. You know, I don't do Clapton's or anything. I don't know how. Um, but I will go out and I do buy – uh, like right now, my go-to is uh, coil turd pre-built coils. Uh, by the sticks, I do my own wraps. I love them, uh, and I, I just find the value in them. I think, uh, as opposed to, and I and, and not that learning something new is bad. You should always want to continue to grow, like with knowledge and the ability to do stuff. But I just don't want to. I want to. <laughs> Type in my credit card on the computer, go to the mailbox, get coils, be done with it. Uh, so I'm a huge fan of uh, pre-built, like premium coils. Uh, but there's a there's a few companies out there that are Chinese based that make really good pre-built coils for what they are. If they're you know they're going to be disposable like the pre-built coils for like a Nautilus or whatever. They'll last you a couple weeks, but you get like a hundred of them for five ten bucks. So, and, and I had said before, I think the value comes in on how valuable is your time? Because if you enjoy building and you have the time to do it, then you, then you enjoy it. So continue to do that. But if you don't want to learn and don't want to mess with it, buy some. There are some crazy coils out there that perform just like, it's like magic, man. I love it. Like right now, I don't have any... RDAs or anything just for convenience factor, but um, I'm super for premium coils and getting pre-built and I'm, I love watching people build too. So I'm, I'm kind of down the middle for it, you know? Yeah, man, it sounds good. Uh, uh, you, I, that's a lot of, uh, a lot of people's views had the same views as you, but uh, we're going to talk about all that in our specific, uh, what we really feel about our value and all that but what about you uh mr just right what do you what's a little bit about how you started or what you're at now you're muted right now by the way sorry your vape was like right in the mic it was loud it was loud 
Yeah, it was off. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, I ought to go to comp with that. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, guys, I started off building coils. I really enjoyed building my coils. Of course, it started with the Cardos and all that good stuff because way back when, building coils wasn't like really a thing. When I started building, we were like 28 gauge, 32 gauge, <laughs> like four wraps around a piece of silica wick. and Four ohms. Yeah, four <laughs> ohms rocking, just blowing massive clouds. But... Now, man, I just I go with whatever comes in the box, man. If I could have my go to coil, it'd be them new coils that Wodafo sends with all their stuff, dude. Them, I don't know if anybody's tried them. Dude, them things rock for what they are. I take a lifetime supply of those and I'd be good. They're really good for pre built coils from a company like Wodafo. I do have to say, yeah, I would I would take a set of those lifetime supply of those and I'd never have to have another coil built for me again. Um. <laughs> uh, that's what I'm on now, and I do do the you know the hundred of them pre built for five bucks. You know you can't beat that, guys. I mean, it's just cheap, easy, and quick. And as much stuff is coming in nowadays, dude, I got to be quick so I can actually have time to sit down and enjoy the product and try it and see what it, what I think about it. So that's me. Very cool, very cool. I uh, I got to building as fast as I possibly could. Um, little bit y'all don't know about Stan. Uh, I know what it looks like with all the stuff I got, but I wheel and deal a lot. Um, I do a lot of trading. I do a lot of selling. Um, and I am cheap AF. I am a cheap AF MFer. Um, so when I started doing, first jumped in with like a Nautilus tank and getting the coils and stuff. And then I started realizing that that wasn't going to keep me off smoking. I needed something a little more. The wife was okay with it for a while. I went up to a sub ohm tank, OBS tank. Um, I don't remember the name of the tank. It was like the OBS-T or something like that. And uh, the second I found out that they had a RBA section, I was all over that. Started doing the research because I got sick of paying 20 bucks for a pack of coils. And uh, the coils weren't that great back then, honestly. <laughs> so um, that's how it happened to me. And now I still wrap round wire and... The only time I actually do any building of fused Claptons or anything is with my Daedalus, which I really don't pull out that much because I've got so many pre-built coils already, um, pre-built what I call what, what I call boutique coils that I enjoy, Tricor fused Claptons, staples, things like that. Um, so I think I think a lot of us have kind of had the same progression um, or close to, but. Anyway, Dima, let's get back to what you were saying. Let's uh, let's take a look at that chat and uh, let's uh, let's get down and dirty with some of those questions. So it looks like we've got mostly builders here. Um, yeah, we've got a big builder following. Well, and I mean, if not builders, at least people who use rebuildable products. Um, <clears throat> you know, let's see here: sub ohm coils, pre-made. I'm looking for. Anybody who uses primarily sub ohm tanks. Well, it doesn't look like we have anybody here that uses primarily sub ohm tanks, to be honest. And that's not unexpected because, um, and if you do primarily use sub ohm tanks, go ahead and pop that down again uh, in the chat so I can see that because um, I might have missed it. But yeah, no, I mean, definitely, you know, rebuildables. I did see one comment that said, you know, he, you know, several comments actually saying, you know, oh, the coils are so expensive, you know, coil heads. So I build because of that. And that is something we wanted to touch on, too, in this uh, conversation today as well, um, <clears throat> because uh, that is true. Um, now, if you're me, it's a lot more expensive to build because I build so much all the time. Um, like I wasted four hundred, at least 400 feet of wire, you know, just the last couple of days trying to make that one single Enigma coil. Um, but I, I find a lot of enjoyment from building. I... I really really like the challenge and i have the time and i have the patience um you know and you know nothing nothing against anybody if they don't but i do want to say that if you've never tried making claptons fuse claptons and those you know type of coils give it a shot because it's really not as you know like for some people you know some people can't because they have you know maybe some disability with their hands or something like that um but it's really not as hard, I think, as people think it is. And I feel like the prop, the 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 block for most people is their their mindset. They think, oh, this is going to be really hard, you know. And it's and it's not as hard as you think. Um, 
you know, but uh, it's uh, yeah, definitely, uh, definitely building as therapeutics as Frank. That's, that's certainly for me. Um, and yeah, so yeah, I guess we have mostly, uh, you know, so this is going to be good then because we'll talk, we'll talk mostly about, uh, you know, tips and tricks and, you know, stuff like that. I've got a list of things that we want to talk about tonight. Well, let's knock down, let's knock down our uh, pre, let's knock down our, our sub ohm coil type conversation real quick then because sure. we can kind of go off the rails on sure. uh, a building kind of conversation sure um what i want to know is 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 there a, i mean we've all used a pretty significant amount uh different companies coil heads correct yeah Am I I correct in assuming that okay so i'm sure everybody has a yeah. preference over over of one over the other well definitely <laughs> <laughs> what was that, John? <laughs> um, uh, well, I, people always give me crap because I say I don't like smoke coils, smoke tech, smock, smock. I don't either. Coils. I don't either. I, I can't stand them, guys. I gotta say one thing on that. You gotta try the Prince tank because they've done something different. They've done something different. I, really? I have heard that. Yes, they have. I promise you, they have, guys. I got one sent to me by Mist Hub. And I've been putting it through its paces, trying to kill that coil. And I'm a week and a half into it, and it's still just as good as the day I got it. And that's impressive to me. Right, right. Considering that most of the coils that I've tried, I mean, the what is it, the Q4? It, what's the one that's the, it's the something four that has basically just a parallel wire running a single coil up the middle? Is that a Q4? That is a Q4, I believe. Okay, that's the only one I ever had that was worth crap to me. In my opinion, if you loved no. it the first time, you're really going to love it this time. I think they changed the cotton, the density of the cotton that they're using, or the kind of cotton that they're using, because that it would seems be to step. wick really, really well. Well, what I was going to say is, is don't confuse my words. Uh, I didn't say love. <laughs> I didn't love it, <laughs> but it was it was the only one that I had a, a, a decent experience with that I could actually you know get anything decent out of. Um, it, 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 I never had a smoke coil lasting more than a week and a half or so. Um, but That's... I, I will tell you this. A lot of the reason that I think that they, they perform the way they do is because of how dense the cotton is, how packed in the cotton is. So you may be onto something with that. They, uh, it's odd. This year, guys, we didn't have a lot of sub-ohm tanks just hit the market. It was just phenomenal. But we've had a few of them come out that were just like, holy crap. And some of them revisited that were just as well. Uh, for example, the Prince Tank by Smock, their new coils that they're using, their first run sucked. But they did something different on their second run that really changed them, changed the game in them. Uh, the Freemax Fire Luke Mesh sub on Tank, phenomenal sub on Tank. I hear good things the, about that coil, actually. Oh, man. I'm still on the same coil since Showcase. Oh wow! Nice. Holy shit! What's your favorite? What's g give us now that you gave us you know a couple of insights on different coils you've tried? What what's your favorite coil? If you had to have one sub ohm tank coil on a desert island, what's it gonna be? The Freemax, just so I know they can vape it for the, a long duration of time, and it's not gonna die. Second contender to that would be the Waterfall Flow Tank. Yeah, those are good coils. <clears throat> yeah. The waterfall flow ones are good. What about you, Nick? Well, I I agree with uh with the smoke thing, man. I have had nothing but bad luck with every smoke product I have ever had after the TFV four. Um, uh, recently, well, I say recently, two months ago, but about a month ago, I picked up the Valerian, and I really like the uh, coil heads in that. Uh, gives pretty good flavor and uh it they they last a, a enough time that i don't mind i don't feel like i'm getting cheated out of having to buy coils um also the the original crown the crown one and the crown three uh those coils i really like as far as sub ohm tank other than that man i like i use the aspire but i mean i'm using 1.8 nautilus coil so uh and, yeah, I'm kind of, we're kind of, let's stick to like, so, like, yeah, uh, coils like that are kind of hard to get, um, you know, kind of hard to distinguish from one another. So I was kind of specifically talking about sub ohm, sub ohm tank coils anyway. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, and, and I like the wake. 
so far. I've, I've been using it for seven hours. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't have a real <laughs> definitive, you know, statement about it, but so far I really like it. Um, and the flavor is good. And that's all I care about. I care about longevity and flavor. Guys, I forgot to mention another one. Smock just released their mesh coil for the Baby Beast platform or Big Beast platform. And I'm really anxious to get my hands on that one and try it and compare it to the Fire Loop to see how it does. A lot of people didn't even know Smock released a mesh coil head for that, but they just did that this last week, week before last. I had no idea. I'm yet to get my hands on it, so I don't know anybody that's Smock. That would be a good comparison for you to post on uh, YouTube. Then some all the. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry that that, 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 that was such a, a hard couple of dots to put together there. So... <laughs> what about you, Demo? What you got? Um, well, so I, I suffer from the uh, the common issue that I feel like most all sub tanks taste exactly the same. Um, and but at, if I had to pick some, um. I would pick the I would I would pick the Wake Tank uh, sub. The, their coils are freaking awesome. I love their coils. Um, you know, I, I just reviewed the Little Foot actually on my channel, and uh, it kind of left me wondering why I would use the RTA base. Frankly, um, because the RTA or the coils are so good, um, <clears throat> and you know, I'm and I'm not just saying that. Like they really are. And then I would I would probably pick the Valerian too. Um, you know, I, I like that a lot, um, but that's really about it. I haven't tried the Fire Luke mesh. I do want to try that, um, but uh, yeah, no, I'm just not. Uh, you know, the thing here's the thing about sub ohm tanks. You know, there's a lot of people in the comments that are well, maybe not a lot of people, but there are some people in the comments that are saying, "Oh, I hate sub ohm tanks. Sub ohm tanks suck." You know, that kind of stuff. At the end of the day, those are the, those are the products that people are like, you know, moving from smoking into those products and stuff like that. So I mean, it does. You know, it does behoove us, especially as reviewers, to find the good ones and recommend the good ones because, um, you know, we have a lot of builders here, but there are way more people that don't build that use sub ohm tanks than there are builders. So, um, you know, it's definitely important. <laughs> Sorry, I, I didn't mean to laugh. Uh, I was laughing at uh, Mr. Just Right eating chips with his camera off. <laughs> <laughs> I just eat. I just eat on camera. I don't give a shit. <laughs> um, so, so I don't use a ton of sub ohm tanks. Um, now, a lot of people do do that. Sub ohm tanks suck and all that business. But, however, if you ever go into a vape shop and you see that they're carrying a ton of smoke products and a ton of smoke coils, that's because that's what sells. Um, and you're going to be a so, returning customer. <laughs> yeah, that, that's what uh, yeah. sells. So there's not a whole lot of building stuff in shops because that doesn't sell. I, uh, unfortunately... Um, <clears throat> not necessarily, unfortunately, I would rather stuff be in the shops where smokers can readily and easily access those products than um, cater to me because I know what I'm looking for. I can go anywhere and find it. Uh, give me that. S send me that. I, I was just, I was just going, I want to. <laughs> <laughs> what, you know what I'm going to, we're going to do one even better. We're going to give this one away tonight to somebody watching. Oh boy. Oh, snaps. So, all right, you guys. Say, all the people who just said they hate sub ohm tanks would be like, X1, X1, X1. Yeah, you're, X1, just, X1. Qualified. <laughs> you're just qualified. No. We're not doing that X1 crap, though. So you guys don't, no, don't, don't yes. be doing that. We'll, we'll come up with a giveaway before the end of the video. But this is going in the giveaway thing. I'm giving that one away. That is my absolute favorite sub ohm tank on the market right now. And it yeah. happens to be in gold, which is my second favorite color. You guys are going to get so, that before I do. How many people <laughs> are watching right now? Thir uh, 43. 43 watching. So. What do you say when we reach a certain uh, when we reach a certain watch? Um, How many likes do we got on the video right now? That's what I want to know. I hope it's forty three. <laughs> we got thirteen <laughs> likes. What's wrong with you guys? Okay, Come on, that's now. what I'm talking about. I want to see that sucker up around like sixty likes. Some at least it ought to have at least sixty <laughs> damn likes. Hell. So um, let's let's keep on watching. Um, the the viewership has to say at forty three or above for us to give away that tank by the end of the show. How about that? Okay, so if we're at less than forty-three, we won't give that sh we won't give that uh, tank away. So that should encourage you guys to share the video and uh, things like that. Get people in here to talk a little <laughs> bit with us. I mean, hell, we're if we're not uh, fun to talk to, at least we're pretty to look at, right? I'll make it even better. 
Y'all get it up over a hundred. I'll buy one out of my own pocket and make it two that I'm giving away. Whoa! So Whoa. forty-three or above for one, and a uh, hundred for two. Check it out. Somebody was saying something about my studio. I just I told them I would show them what's up. So this is the new. That's the new stage background right there. Got my lighting and stuff happening in my. This is my workstation. My. Uh, it's a mess right now, but it's getting there. Everything's getting there. There's going to be a whole lot more stuff interesting to look at on the walls, so you don't have to stare at my face the whole time. Um, but anyway, so, yeah, epic beards. There we go. Monty Marino loves our beards. <laughs> no so, boy! Boy! Beard boy! <laughs> so uh, I have a feeling there's going to be a lot of that in ECC. Yes. <laughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. So... Back to the sub ohm tank thing. What I was saying is, is yes, there's a lot of sub ohm tank stuff happening. Um, my personal opinion on my favorite coil that I have used is the Cleto 120. Somebody said that in the chat. I totally agree. The Cleto 120 is a fantastic coil. I absolutely love it. Um, it's always two plus weeks for me. Um, also, you know what? Oh, the UL Crown coil. I, I love that coil. It's just a really good tasting coil and a really long lasting coil for me as well. There's not a whole lot to judge those things on other than flavor and uh, how long they last. I mean, airflow is going to be whatever the tank lets it be and whatever the restriction on the coil is. So can't really judge all coils the same that way. Uh, here's a little trick. And you may have seen this before somewhere, but you can take a needle or something and kind of break up your cotton a little bit inside those coils to kind of loosen it up. Um, just take your coil, take a little needle and just break it up a little bit or hell you can even put a hole all the way through, but then you're fiddling with leaking. So if you break that, that cotton up a little bit, kind of loosen it up in there, it will wick a whole lot better because they really pack that stuff tight. So that's a little trip, a little tip or a little trick that you guys can use on your sub ohm tank coils. Um, so now we can get into what we all love to talk about or what most of us in the chat love to talk about. I know what Demo loves to talk about. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about building, okay? Let's start with the basics. Let's start with um, – here's how I kind of have this planned out in my head, okay? Let's talk about what's going to give us what type of vape categories, okay? Ramp up, um, flavor. Okay. And clouds. So ramp up flavor and clouds. Let's use those. Let's start with round wire and then we can build on our coil, uh, our kind of coil ideas after that. Okay. Okay. So how about go ahead and start us off uh, demo. All right. So I've done a decent little bit of sort of pseudoscience um, with this. And I say pseudoscience purely because, you know, uh, I've not done any like scientific lab testing on this kind of stuff, but uh, science. you want to present me, bro. Um, no. you, you haven't presented me this whole time. <laughs> I haven't presented anybody. I'm being lazy this evening. I'm enjoying my 10% beer and you can't stop me. <laughs> um, so, all right. So round wire for me certainly is going to be the best for ramp up, right? And if you build a huge giant ramp round wire coil, then, you know, you're still going to have some issues with round wire, but um, the ramp up has to do with coil mass, right? So the big, the more mass your coil has, the slower it's going to ramp up per wattage that you run it at. So, um, in my opinion, every wire gauge has an ideal uh, ideal ramp up at a given wattage, right? So if we're talking like mech mods, you know, I use mech mods as a good place to kind of go off of because they give you a certain constant voltage that you're going to get for sure, and you build for that, right? Um, the um, let's see, what did you say about twisted? Oh, sorry. Um, the uh, anyway, so, but flavor and clouds has to do with surface area, right? And so the, the thing that you want to kind of concentrate on when you're building is balancing both your resist resistance is the first thing that I kind of think about, you know, because obviously you don't want to go underneath what's safe for your batteries. Um, but you want to balance the, res the mass and the surface area because if you have a ton of surface area, but it ramps up super slow, you're going to get a cool vape. And, you know, or if your coil is huge, you're going to end up with a cool vape, especially if you're on a vaping on a mech. But if you don't have a whole lot of surface area, you know, you do like a one wrap coil, right? You're, you're going to end up with having, you know, a super fast ramp up with very thin, weak vape because there's not enough surface area, right? So it kind of becomes this balance where you're balancing heat capacity, heat flux, um, surface area, 
mass, et cetera, et cetera. So that's kind of the the, the ticket when you when it comes to that. And so I have a lot of opinions on what that you know what the ideal ratio of mass to surface area is. Um, but you know that's that's just me, and everyone everyone likes their vapes a little different. So you know what what might be perfect for me is not going to be perfect for others and what will be perfect for others is not going to be perfect for me so that's what the beauty of building is that you can make your product however you want you know so what's yeah. your favorite um what's your favorite Sorry. allergies huh that's okay what uh, i got it too i'm rubbing my nose the whole time yeah. trying not to, uh, never mind yeah. um <laughs> so what is what is your favorite build to do in a simple round wire and why? So I barely ever use round wire. And that's purely because of the fact that um, I prefer more complicated builds with a little more surface area. Um, but if I am going to use something with round wire, it depends. You know, if I'm going to build for a mech, it's going to be 22 gauge nichrome, five, six wraps uh, around a three, three and a half millimeter bit. Um, dual coil now if i'm vaping mouth to lung for example if i'm building like a k-fun or something like that then i'm using like 26 gauge uh stainless steel 26 gauge nichrome something like that because that's going to be a thinner wire that'll have a really fast ramp up time uh like an eight wrap or something like that for that around a two and a half millimeter bit that's kind of my ideal for round wire so you like a hot vape i do like a hot vape yeah i do like a hot vape and I vape mostly on mechs now uh, or unregulated stuff. So, you know, I kind of try to build for that. Um, I do find that my builds are nice on regulated mods too, but you have to have a mod that can fire pretty low. My typical build rocks around like 0.11 or so. That's, you know, so I use a lot of parallel boxes and whatnot. If I'm vaping on a series, I vape between 0.3 and 0.35 um, typically. And, um, you know, if we're going to talk about non uh, you know, round wire builds for a second. I'm all about the frame staples and the alien frame staples. Those are my entheon of, you know, coil building. I find that I get the best flavor from a staple variant. Uh, that ribbon wire just makes, gives you so much clarity and so much crispness to the flavor. And, you know, especially when you're using nichrome, uh, for me, I find that you just get a killer flavor and a nice warm to hot vape. Okay. All right. What about you, Nick? Uh, well, my, I, uh, I, I have to agree. I mean, just with the basic sense of, of, I have always gotten better flavor with aliens or fuse Clapton's or any of the multitude of variations out there. And I, and I like them, I can't build them. So I like to, to like, look at other people do it. It's like watching magic. Uh, but for me, everything <laughs> I build is, is just round, round wire, uh, Nichrome 90. Uh, I'll either use Maniac. If I want a hot build, I'll do five reps, 22 gauge, three mil bit. And it's like a 0 0.08, 0 0.09. And, uh, I'll run that on like my drag box or something. And, uh, a regulated mod, right? I just want to. I just want to iterate that a .08 or a .09 is not something that we uh, recommend. No, no, no. On my drag. On the there drag. You go. Cool. And that's that's another reason I love this thing, man. Fires down to a .05 safely. And uh, but other than that, I mean, like I said before, I buy I buy pre built. I'll buy anybody's coils that are making them, just because they're they're always going to be a little different. Um, and I'm I'm a big fan of aliens. If I want just straight flavor, that's what I'm going to go to. Uh, if not, if I just want something in an RDA, then I'm going to use Nichrome or yeah, either Nichrome 80 or Nichrome 90. Okay, why do you prefer uh, Nichrome 90 over Nichrome 80? Uh, it I, I like the way the it heats up faster. Um, I, I don't know much about the characteristics of the material, um, but I believe it's it, a higher nickel content. Yes. Okay, perfect. Um, Ninety percent nickel instead of eighty percent nickel. Okay, uh, and it it has a for me it it tastes cleaner than using canthal, uh, so I'll use that. Um, and don't get me wrong, I mean I'll build like 0 0.25, 0 0.3, uh, and throw it on a, a whatever. But uh, you know, it's it's just there's something about that wire that doesn't have a weird taste to it that I will get 
from other wires. I, it sounds weird, but it's like a, a preference thing. Like stainless steel, I cannot vape it. All I, I can taste the metal in it. And I don't know if it's a, a mine thing or uh, I have no idea. Well, with stainless steel, a lot of people taste the metal because they overfire their stainless steel. They blow it too hot and you can wind up oxidizing your metal and making a slightly metallic taste. Stainless steel, you don't ever want to take beyond like a, a nice red to barely orange, um, you know, because you can wind up, especially if you go too far past that, you can melt your melt your metal, especially with stainless. And nichrome too, you don't really want to like canthal, people glow canthal to like, it's like almost white hot. Nichrome, you really, really want to be gentle. Like a nice solid orange is as far as I take nichrome because that's just, you know, I don't want to fuck with, oh, I got a hair floating in my video. <laughs> um <laughs> Anyway, so yeah, that's 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 my thing. The thing about Nichrome 90 for me, though, and I don't want to take this on. We'll talk about this later. But the thing about Nichrome 90 for me is I don't know. I want to know whether it's safe to have less chromium in the wire because at what point does the alloy no longer protect against nickel oxidization, which is toxic, right? And so because you, you don't want to glow nickel, like straight pure nickel, right? But at what point does that? I need a metallurgist to tell me what 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 is that maximum nickel content you can have and have it be safe, right? Because I'm, I don't want to use it until that point. Well, we'll talk or, about. I, I, we'll I talk about of, that. Yeah, yeah. I got a couple of things to say on that too. So, uh, what about you, Mister? Uh, just right. Oh, never mind. Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Mister? Just right. What? what, what? You for, you were gonna drop me like that? I wasn't going to drop you. You like went off the screen. Like you hit yourself. You showed me the damn bathtub picture again. I've seen that thing 15,000 times. When are you going to change that thing? I swear you ain't got no drawers on in that. In that I uh... don't. That's a well known <laughs> fact. I don't. I was already asked that. I do not. You're all covered up in Watofo, in Watofo gear and everything, and you got no drawers on. <laughs> you know, sadly, I'm going to call Watofo out on this right here, right now. I don't have any Watofo gear. None. <laughs> I ain't even got a damn hat, a handkerchief. I ain't even got a Kleenex that says Waterfo on it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, my favorite round wire build is 22 gauge Canthal 5 wrap. That, it's just my go to, man. That's, I've always done that. And matter of fact, a lot of people don't know it, but some people do that whenever I get something to review or look at, the very first thing I do is throw a round wire build in it because I want to look at it from a beginner standpoint, somebody who just got their first coil building kit and an RDA. And if it is not user-friendly at that point, therefore it gets a hash in my book. Like it's an automatic negative because I think those people should always be remembered. And we've already gone over that tenacious, just like our very first conversation. I don't ever want those people to be forgotten. You know, the starting vapor. Yes, there is products labeled for, or, for advanced users and so forth, for battery resistance and all that, but it ought to be ease of build. You know, like the model cars you get, say like ages blank to blank, it ought to be vape experience, beard from here to here, or, you know, how much hair you got left on your head. If you're completely bald, then you get, <laughs> you know, that's just the truth, guys. A 22 round wire, that, that's five wraps. That's it for me. Uh, anything okay. more than that? It's just pissing in the wind, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, again, whatever waterfall coil sends, that's my like flavor. But round wire, 22 gauge, five wrap, hands down. Leave it at that. Canthal, you said, right? Oh yes, sir. It's rather cheap. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, uh, uh, um. <laughs> so my thing is, is I I agree with you on the on the round wire thing. I actually. Uh, put i well i used to put round wire in everything when i first got it just because i was along the same lines of thinking where i'm like i want to put just a basic canthal or stainless or nichrome round wire build whatever's cheap 24 gauge or 22 gauge and just see how it performs right well <clears throat> now i've kind of come around to where i mean on lucidrda.com there will be a coilology <laughs> uh coilology pre-built coils available in and there's also like Vandy Vape makes theirs and Geek Vape makes theirs. And you can go to the store and get Demon Killer. Or any, you can get these Fuse Claptons or regular Claptons or whatever just in spools. So 
I kind of am along the lines of thinking where as long as I don't get like some or <clears throat> put some kind of crazy frame staples or corrugated cat caterpillar killer coils or whatever uh, in, then I still will get an experience that a, somebody that's newer to building will get. Um, Did you just say caterpillar I, killer? Yeah. Corrugated cat caterpillar killer. So uh, what I do is, is I still put two or three different kinds of builds, but of that level, like easier spool type, you know, builds. Um, my preferred wire to build with is stainless. Um, we'll get into why in a few minutes, but the ramp up is super fast on stainless, in my opinion. Um, Canthal, I feel like, I feel like Canthal is a good safe wire. It's safe and stable at really high temperatures. Um, but don't just run out using stainless if you're new at this. Canthal is the best thing to start with because of how stable it is and at how hot you get it. Um, <clears throat> and the my, resistance is higher. And the resistance is higher. Yeah, right. You can build something that's going to be a 0 0.1 on stainless, but it's going to be a 0.45 as Canthal. You know what I'm saying? So basically play with your wires, kind of get an idea. Um, and always, if you're going to just get into building, do it on regulated boxes. Uh, don't get into building on mechs. Um, understand building first and then move to mechs if you decide to, if you decide that's something you want to play with. Uh, it'll help you understand how resistances work and everything. But <clears throat> I like the ramp up of stainless. I like the heat of stainless. Um, I like being able to have a big coil. So that's why I like the resistance a little bit low. If I can fit a three and a half millimeter or four millimeter coil in there and get a ton of cotton in there and get the resistance up to 0.2, I'll be a happy camper. You know what I'm saying? So <clears throat> my favorite build to put into the lucid is four millimeter, 13 wrap, you know, 22 gauge. <laughs> it's, it's awesome. So uh, that's just what I like. But now let's, let, we all had kind of a, a, you need to get off that Everclear message just right. <laughs> Y'all y'all can't see him because I'm presenting, I'm presenting myself. But Mr. Just Right's got all kinds of fish lips and everything going on down here. Um, Are you making so, fun of my soup coolers, man? No, nah, man. I, I'm turn, you know what? I got to turn this pre presentation off so people can kind of see the shenanigans down there. But uh, that's I, I like I like leaving it off so everybody can see everybody's reactions and stuff. But um, so let's let's take a look real quick at the chat. Um, actually I'm going to, I'm going to set up the next part of the conversation. If you guys don't mind kind of move it along a little bit, Demo, would you mind taking a look at the chat and we'll hit on anything you see? That's yeah, interesting? I, was, I did just want to say what I need to throw into my, uh, lucid soon here is oh. 20 gauge nichrome. Get some of that stuff. Hold, That'll fit around. just fine. Yep. Absolutely. Let's put that back there. Wrap four mil. Oh, and here you go. Yeah, definitely. Here you go. Here's a, if any, any of the, any of the naysayers out there, here's a horizontal, Six wrap fused Clapton in the uh, the Lucid there. Oh boy! Oh four five wrap. Sorry. So um. Okay, I'll take a look at chat. Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I, I just wanted to talk and say. So I'm gonna start it off here. We'll talk a little bit about maybe with just you. You just joined the video call, Mister Just Right. Um. <laughs> I just wanted to tell everybody that that the difference between Canthal stainless and nichrome which are the big three i mean you've got out there titanium which i don't suggest to anybody our instagram um, pics yeah okay <laughs> that's the difference <laughs> all right no, I'm um, guys. and solid solid nickel uh which i don't vape um and i'll tell you why i don't vape solid nickel because nickel and i've said that before and that's you know now i understand nichrome has nickel in it but it, like as um, Demo said there's less of a chance for nickel oxide because the chromium is protecting it. So it's it. Did I say that wrong? No, yeah, you're right. The alloy, uh, the alloy in that case. One thing that people don't is sometimes people you know don't quite understand is that an alloy is a different metal, right? It's two metals together, but it is a different metal and has different properties, right? Properties. So, there you go. So you know it won't oxi oxidize in the same way. Now that's always my question, though, is what is the minimum? Every alloy has a limit, right? If you put like 0.1 percent chromium in the nickel, I don't feel like that could be enough, right? Like, well, that's what gets me to the conversation where I'm, I'm going at right here is because the difference between canthal stainless and nichrome is 
basically the properties they have and at what temperatures like like i said canthal is very very stable at very high temperatures which is why people can glow it white hot and everything but you get kind of that metally taste some people say some people don't say that i'm sure mr just right wouldn't agree with me uh because he loves canthal but <clears throat> nichrome nichrome is is a good metal it's a fast ramp up but it's questionable at what temperature, you know, or like where can you stop glowing it? Now, stainless, you don't ever want to glow like really hot, okay? I am one of those people that no matter what the metal is that I'm building with, I will take my hand. Here, here's my build stand. Where'd my build stand go? It's over there. I will take my build here and I will put my hand over it like this and get the light off of it and I will go ahead and fire it and I'll glow it just barely. Like, I can't see it when the light's on it, but if I cover it, I can see it. Just so that I for sure will not overheat those coils. I for sure will not. And you know what? Call me paranoid. Call me whatever you want. I don't care. I'm not going to get that anywhere near the temperature that it'll take to oxidize. And that's just my opinion and the way that I do it. So uh, do you guys have any tips or tricks or any kind of uh, paranoia or ideas or anything like that on those that subject? Um. Or answer questions out of the chat. Whatever. Sure. Um, I don't think we have too many questions. If I missed a question, please throw it up again. Um, but um, there's a lot of, I mean, pretty much, uh, you know, going along with what I had said earlier, everyone's got their, their metal that they like, you know, so everyone's different here. Like there's, there, you know, doesn't seem to be any like, you know, kind of, uh, you know, allegiance here in chat to one metal or another. Um, the, the thing about oxidization, um, you know, and be and harmful oxides forming, um, you have to with the stable alloys, nichrome eighty, canthal, and um, you know, stainless to a certain degree. Stainless, as far as I know, now all of this is as far as I know, right? I'm not a metallurgist and I'm not a scientist, so if I say something wrong and you know something different, please go ahead and say it in chat, um, you know, or just don't, you know, don't burn me at the stake because of because of that ah. but, you know yeah um the you know canthal canthal oxidizes in a way that actually help the oxides help protect the metal uh to a certain degree and you know that's a lot of people like to to fire their coils a bunch before they wick them because that helps kind of get rid of that metallic taste um the thing about nichrome is nichrome you have to fire it ridiculously hot before it starts to oxidize um, so, you know, if you don't, if you don't, if you take it to a nice, like a nice solid orange, you're fine. Um, the, the thing about stainless is that as far as I know, stainless will pop and it will break before it gets to any sort of oxidization point where it's really, really harmful. But basically as a general rule, unless you're using canthal, um, don't take your coils beyond orange, right? Like a, a solid orange is you know is okay if it's really bright like if it's a really bright glow it's too bright it's too 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 hot like i take it to a nice medium orange you know not super bright you know like all of that kind of stuff um for me i've never felt uh, weird about it at that point stainless is the only metal that i'm like real careful with because you got to just be real careful with it it's it's very fragile um, you know, red is okay. Um, you know, glow and red is, you know, lower than orange. That's fine. You just want to make sure you get all your hot spots out so you don't burn your cotton, but you know, anything beyond that isn't necessary. So, you know, yeah, that's, that's kind of my, my opinion on that. Purely Where's the band hammer on Joel in the chat? <laughs> yeah. I'm fucking with the guys in the chat, guys. I'm just no. Uh, uh, <laughs> I I agree with most of what you said. What, what, Nick, you've been so quiet over there. I mean, I know that you're <laughs> primarily a Nichrome 80, Nichrome 90 kind of guy. I mean, I I bought an RDA, a couple of RDAs from you, and both of them had like the same exact Nichrome build in them. Yep. So, uh, what, <laughs> what do you have any uh, any points or any opinions or anything to say? Uh, well, you know, it it goes back to the whole understanding what you're doing is heating up metal and uh you and and i i don't ever take the coils beyond just enough to make sure that they're firing evenly because and maybe this is a, a paranoia thing i figure they're going to break down over time that's just what happens so if I'm not heating them up as frequently or get them to a point where it is so hot that they are 
it hurts to look at, then I, I feel pretty confident using it. Um, I, I did, unfortunately, at one point um, try titanium, uh, my first vape shop job. I needed to rebuild a RDA I had, and that was all that was available at the time. And uh, I used that once, and and then I immediately gathered all of it together and threw it away in the trash. I felt no customer needed to have that. Um, but I have know, a problem just... with a metal that can like actually catch fire on its own. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, mean, <laughs> you know, I just don't. And it's a low temperature too, by the way. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, no, no. You're fine. You're fine. No, you uh, interrupted. <laughs> Uh, it's just, uh, making sure, I mean, really it doesn't, you don't need to get stuff white hot. I mean, it, the, the few times that I've done that early on learning how to build on accident, the leads has, had always popped. So I figured very early on by not going as hot with it, I'm not going to have a worry of a lead popping and it falling in my lap or on the carpet, <laughs> which have both had happened. Um, and you know, just, just take it slow. I mean, and if you don't know what you're doing, don't do it. There's, there are entirely too many resources out there for learning and making sure if this is okay or this is not okay. So I just, I keep it simple. And that's why if you ever buy an RDA from me, I I leave the build in it. Um, I never know if people want it or not. And it's going to be the exact same build in every RDA. <laughs> right. Um, if, one thing, uh, if you mind, sorry, if you ahead. sell someone a built RDA and they blow themselves up with it, you could run into liability issues. So I would always recommend that if you ever sell anybody, anybody in chat, an RDA, please take the build out because that, you know, at the end of the day, I've I have given away RDAs with coils built in them, and my. Uh, my lawyer was like, do not do that because you could wind up getting in big trouble. If they somebody you know, asked, if I, if I build a point one and they start throw it on series, you know, it's on. bad. <clears throat> What'd you say? Uh, just right? Somebody asked in the chat, what watts do you start to pre-burn a coil on? Man, treat your coils like a relationship. You don't want to just start off hot and heavy. You want to take it gradual. You want to take baby steps. You can't just... Oh, this thing goes 200 watts. Let me crank it up 200 watts and see what it does. It's not a good practice. Take little baby steps, easy steps. I always start at 20 or 30 watts because I'm usually building somewhere between 0.1 and 0.5. So I always start about 20 to 30 watts, and then I go up from there depending on how long it takes to ramp. Yeah. All right. Somebody said they're digging your uh, recoil hat. Nick, I need to get me a recoil hat. I've been wearing this USB hat for so long. Yeah, man, you, you, can, uh, you can get these at recoilrda.com. And they, oh, uh, hey, hey, that's the wrong website. And you can also get hats at lucidrda.com. <laughs> <laughs> Shameless plug. Um, they so are selling buy, OG. The <clears throat> they are selling OG squonk reef. Uh, sorry, OG recoil squonks over on recoilrda.com. So if you want a recoil RDA, the original recoil that squonks, go get go get you one. Recoilrda.com. Um, Sorry, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't have those. I might want one of those actually. Oh, oh, they're twenty five. The they're twenty five bucks. I want the OG. I want the new one. The the Rebel, the red one. That thing yeah. is dope. Yeah, the, the I, I like the Rebel. The Recoil and the Rebel are consistently my favorite RDAs that I've used. Uh, the Rebel specifically for squonking. It uh, <laughs> it is. I'll, I'll get into that later, man. It is. It is the Rebel's the, great for squonking. I mean, you can talk about it. The Rebel's fantastic for squonking. Dude, I actually have the Rebel. Talk about whatever squonk. you want to talk about, man. There's no reason. We, none of us are being paid for this. I mean, hell, it's all free opinion and matter. Absolutely. Yeah, we, we, I'm not, you say what you topic, want to say, we'll, brother. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so. We jump off topic every now and then, but we'll get back to it. Demo's really good at steering us back on topic. Typically. Yeah. <laughs> um, He's rolling well, his sleeves up, guys. You know we're in trouble. When Demo starts doing this, you know we're in trouble. <laughs> um the rebel interestingly enough is i, I don't i don't like the rebel um, it's demo's favorite rda ever i ever. just want to say yes, by his favorite reviewer ever i'm sorry if i seemed a little harsh 
Nick, when I was like talking about the um, you know leaving a build in your RDA, so I don't I don't know. No, 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 no. I had no idea. I and so, but I'm glad to know that because I don't want to be getting a, a knock at my door and getting served papers for right for blowing someone, someone up. up. Right, you know, and, then, and, and and that's you know ultimately everyone should be responsible for themselves, but we all know from the news how many people blame other people and you know blame the vape shop and this that or the other when they blow themselves up. So yeah, I have yeah, a huge money fee payment, so people can't blame me for stuff for my retail site. Right. right. <laughs> um, but uh, just so that you guys million dollar general dude, liability, dude, man, seriously, this is crazy. The people are nuts. Um, and everybody has to have it nowadays, dude. The general liability umbrella policy. Ever, if you're in any kind of business at all, vape related at all, you got to carry that. I mean, it's like mandatory. And yeah. there's very few companies that actually carry the policy, so therefore, it costs us an arm and a leg. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. Nice, Chris. Good <laughs> job. Two and a half yeah, years in vaping for. So. I was just about to say that, man. Chris has been going two and a half years today. I actually just had my three years yesterday so am i am i the only weird one that doesn't keep track of that people always ask me and i'm like uh two years ish maybe i think back to august 18th and i'm like a year year, or august 8th and i'm like a year before that maybe (laughs) the only reason i know that is my wife was out of town and i had spent about 200 dollars on vaping stuff when i was a four (laughs) hundred day smoker and well, when I get into stuff, I go all in. And I'm like, well, if I have one setup at work, I need to have one at home. You know, when one dies, I need a backup. And then I need all this juice just in case. <laughs> and so I get a phone call and I'm like, okay, you're mad. When she was in Chicago paying $20 a pack for cigarettes. And I was sitting here and it's, you know, 30 degrees outside, 40 degrees. And that's too cold because I was tired of going outside to smoke. And I couldn't play Grand Theft Auto because the controller wouldn't reach that far. <laughs> so I was like, I'm, I'm going to pick up a vape so I can just sit inside and, and vape the whole time. And, uh, and then it stuck. And the only reason I know that is because it was, uh, I, I went on a uh, lunch break at work because I was trying to get cigarettes, but the parking lots didn't connect. So I had, to, I pulled into a, a, a spot in front of a store to turn around and I look up and it was a, vape shop i'm like okay that's a sign so went in and and it's i haven't smoked since so something's that's good man that's good you you, you started because you just wanted to stay inside and play video games yeah and, and, it, and not much has changed so <laughs> <laughs> so um <clears throat> the reason i <laughs> use stainless over- <laughs> oh he got him some <laughs> got him so um, the reason I use stainless over anything else is because I like the heat. Um, I like the fast ramp up. Um, you can get kind of the same heat and uh, fast ramp up with nichrome. I just believe that stainless does it better. And I believe that stainless is a, a safer metal in my you'll opinion. You'll see when I send you some of my coils, you'll see. I, no, I, I, <laughs> coils, man. I'll still vape nichrome. I just don't vape as much nichrome as I do stainless. Um, I vape very little canthal only when I'm doing series builds because I want that really high resistance. Uh, now, let's get a little bit into the uh, boutique style coils. If you guys have questions, I'm watching the chat. If you guys have questions or whatever, go ahead and throw them in, in the chat and we'll, we'll get to them. Um, however, the, the with kind of the boutique, like by boutique style coils, I'm talking about Fuse Clapton's, you know, basically anything other than round wire is kind of where I'm getting at. So for me, my favorite builds are um, very thin core fused Clapton's with stainless steel and then wrapped with pretty much whatever you want, nichrome, canthal, whatever. Um, <clears throat> I prefer stainless, but nichrome wrap is fine. Canthal wrap is fine as long as it's thin. Um, and the reason why is because a stainless core, and Demo, you can correct me if I'm wrong, because I am not a big builder. Um, a stainless core will, a thin stainless core will give you a very fast ramp up and the heat you want. And the wrap is depending on how much surface area you have. Uh, a thinner wire, you're going to get more wraps around it. So you're going to get more surface area. So, no. What? Go ahead. No. That's, no. that's a common okay, misconception. Correct. 
Um, How is that a misconception? Please correct me. Because even though you're getting more wraps around it, the metal itself is thinner. And the bigger the metal, the more surface area you'll have. And <clears throat> as long as your wraps are touching, even but if you, you have get more wraps. get closer together with a smaller wrap. True, with a but smaller wrap. true. Well, that's, that's, that's right. So if you go on Steam Engine and you type in a coil and then change the wrap, as explain you what Steam Engine is, gauge, real quick. Sorry. Explain. Oh yeah. What sorry. Steam Engine. Steam Engine is a um, is a is a really awesome uh, resource for us here in the vape community um, that allows you to input your coil specs and it will output a you know approximation of what resistance that you should put at. It also has uh, Ohm's law calculators and other things in there that are really really great. So I'll I'll pop a link down for it if you've not checked it out. Um, but when you go up in gauges, you'll find that the surface area that it lists for your coil starts going down. And that's because even though you have a thinner, even though you're white, you have more wire covering that surface, the wire is thinner. And so therefore, because all the wraps are, should be touching anyway, you have much more surface area on a larger wire. Because if you think about it, your surface area is coming from the entire circumference of the wire, right? So it's it's complicated but a lot of people think that that will in increase surface area but in reality it does decrease surface area um the what i find the wrap wire affects more is ramp up so the thinner the wrap wire you have the faster the ramp up you will have and the uh thicker the wrap wire that you have the slower the ramp up will be and but i do find that in certain cases the thinner the wrap wire you have the less flavor you get so that's just my own personal experience, but that's because I have, you know, everything from 20 gauge back here all the way up to 46 gauge. So I, you know, I use a ton of different wires on a regular basis and I've tried out tons of different coils with different wrap wires. And I, I mean, no disrespect <clears throat> in saying that, but I, I have, I have heavily tested this stuff out but okay so so what i'm getting sorry i'm watching joel dance so uh what i'm getting out of that or what like which i i knew but uh just so that everybody anybody watching that may didn't know or that watches that maybe doesn't know um basically the more surface area the more flavor you're going to get because the more vapor production you're going to get because the more juice can touch more surface correct Yes, but the problem is, is that the the more surface area you have, typically the more mass you'll have, which then means your output will be lower if you're at the same wattage. So right, you have to up the wattage. Yeah, you have to up your wattage the more surface area you have. Now that's that's kind of where I wanted. I I did want to talk for, at some point about building for a mech versus building for a regulated. So right. So so basically, we'll a point a point. Let's say, let's just use a nice round number. A point yep. two staple coil. Yep. It's going to ramp a lot slower at 50 watts than a 0.2 20, 26 gauge round wire. Correct. Mm. Correct. Because there's much right. more metal in there. So um, at 50 watts. Sorry. Exactly. Exactly. So that's why when you're building, it's there is, in my opinion, everyone will have their own. But there is, for me, an ideal gauge for each build. Right. So. I like my frame staples with 28 gauge nichrome frames, six pieces of 0.3 ribbon and 42 gauge outer wrap. That's my frame staple. Um, and that for me is perfect. Um, but you know, if I throw 40 or 38 gauge on the outside of that, you get some pretty good flavor, but the vape is cooler off of the Mac. So say somebody's used to getting a, a dual 26 gauge core fused Clapton's yep. and they want a faster ramp up. <clears throat> What would you suggest with them going down to like a dual 28 gauge or, or say, I'm sorry, they want a faster ramp up, but the same, uh, the same resistance. Would you just suggest to them dropping the, uh, the gauge on the wire of the cores and nope, adding for, an extra wrap or for faster ramp up at the same resistance. So we're, we're basically talking about the same core wires here, right? So if, if, if well, you can change course, like, what would you suggest? Like if they want, you know, uh, okay. Uh, if, Right. Like if they have a dual 26 gauge fuse clapped in, yep. you know, wrapped in so, like 36, which is basically the normal China coil. Yep. So if you're building yourself, right, if you're building your own coils, right, and you have control over all these elements, if you want fine, if you want fine 
uh, differences in ramp up. Like if you want to like have like a fine tune, you can change your wrap wire thickness. So you go thinner on the wrap wire, you get faster ramp up. Now, if you want, excuse me, sorry. If you want a big change in ramp up, then you will need to change your core wires. So you would then go up, up a gauge, right? For, for faster ramp up, but you would also need to decrease the number of wraps in order to stay at the same resistance. Why wouldn't you go wait up a gauge? So like from 26 to 28. Correct. Okay. 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 Yeah. Um, now I just wanted to get in there. Um, S I F U where to go mustache. Sif you mustache. I don't know what that means. Um, he says, or she says, they say, so when you talk about mass, you mean wire diameter question mark? No, I mean with the weight of the coils, the actual density and the actual weight of the material in there. How much actual metal? Well, mass is so, different than weight. So, but actually right. how much actual metal is in the build as opposed to how round the build is? Right. Yeah. The more, the more metal you have, the more it's going to weigh out in grams. Therefore your mass will go up. You know what I mean? So it's, you know. That's 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 what I mean. <laughs> that hard guy, you're being a jerk. <laughs> he says you have two buckets of water. One has one gallon. One has ten gallons. It's more work ramp up to pick up twenty gallon bucket versus the one gallon bucket. And then uh, King Ginger, who's known as Chrome Seven Thirty on YouTube, says, "Where did the extra ten gallons come from? Jesus, you're making twenty gallons fit in a ten gallon." <laughs> Demo's hands scare me. Why do my hands scare you? <laughs> I've got, I've got, I have tremendous hands. Everyone says great things about my hands. Oh God, you got him on the, okay, okay, now do Grim Green. Oh no, I, I'm not, I don't want to get into oppressions right now. Do Grim Green! <laughs> do, okay, then sing, mm, sing. All right, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> it's Thursday, vlog day. <laughs> Okay. So yeah, that's 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 my little mass versus surface area versus it, it's coil building is when you really get into it, it's fucking complicated. It's there's a lot of factors that go into a build that you have to um supple AF. Um <laughs> stop it. Stop it. Stop it, Demo. Sorry. I had to go there. Um, Demo, we're going to be sharing a room soon. Stop acting like that. I'm going to start thinking about your hands. I know. It's going to be great. Um, He's going to walk yeah. in. He's going to have rubber gloves and some lube. Yeah. Come here, boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So yeah, yeah, Nick's, Nick's going to come in with the vlog camera. He's going <laughs> to knock on the door and come in with the vlog camera, and I'm going to be rubbing oil on Demo's head. I'm going to be like... <clears throat> <laughs> 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 oh. Jeff Sneed says not all metals weigh the same. That is correct. The 26 gauge canthal, a size, a, the same size piece of 26 gauge canthal, and the same size piece of 26 gauge nichrome do not weigh the same. So that is also true. Um, but it's all a ra it's ratio, right? It's a ratio between your mass and your resistance, you know, and and surface area. So that that all has something to do with that. So it's 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 it, it all boils down to that. So in hindsight, there's a lot of different aspects yes. that make up a lot of different parts. I could talk about pieces. this for hours. Yeah, I know. That's why I'm cutting <laughs> you off. Sorry. <laughs> <That's okay. laughs> so um, th there's lots of different aspects in 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 thought thought processes that go into building. You can do all kinds of different things to get what you want. Basically, you have to determine what you want, and then you have to basically do science to figure it out and get there and you can take tips from demo you can take tips from you know me not being a builder but knowing kind of how metal works and stuff and other people that are that do the same type of thing and get an understanding yeah, me and Nick of where you give you no opinions guys me and no, Nick are just no. top liver <laughs> <laughs> I, no, that's not. That's not what. Not, I, not, 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 not. You know what? It's okay. You just want to sit down there and dance and like show off <laughs> your little red RDAs and and make fish faces. And if you want, if you want to do that, that's fine. But if you want to get in on the conversation, get in on the conversation. I will gladly get on the conversation. I didn't want to overspeak on Demo because Demo is like the wizard, the scientist when it comes to that. I love Demo, but, but you have I to have overspeak on Demo. I have a question. Now. <laughs> how, how on the tell me you didn't start weighing your damn coils one day and say, okay, well, a five wrap weighs this and the 
six wrap weighs this. I mean, you just you kind of get all you can get all those specs actually on uh, Steam Engine, which I still haven't put a link in. Uh, if you if you punch in all your information, it will it will spit out a mass for you. So, Good but thing. I could do that. I have a scale that weighs really really down to the point oh one. Really now, what are you doing? <laughs> That's for juice making. <laughs> Angela Garrity says, uh, "Can everyone on the show do one impression for us?" I've already done mine. Do yeah, another that's, one. That's a big no. <laughs> okay, so yeah, so I I I, I, I can do the uh, I can do Todd and Daily Vape TV Nick really really well. So Todd is, hey folks, Todd here. Today we're going to be reviewing the K Fun Prime. <laughs> um, Nick from Daily Vape TV is uh, is uh, what's up, vapers? Thanks for checking out Daily Vape TV. My name's Nick, and th- today is Fresh Build Friday. Vape on. Vape on. <laughs> Dude, that reminds, me, that reminds me of Tony the Tiger. Every time he does that, I'm like, they're great. <laughs> Cracks me up. That, that was my impression. All right, Nick, your turn. I Man, I don't, I don't have any impressions of I don't either. I did Tony the Tiger, so it's your turn. Uh, can, you, can you come back to me? I, I, I'm not an on-the-spot kind of person. On the spot, ready to go. Back? Hold on, let me present you. <laughs> now am I big and full screen? Yeah, now I am. There you are. Go. See, the impressions that I know are irrelevant now, and so it's just going to make me look like a jackass. So <laughs> sweet, do it. So okay. <laughs> this I have to preface this. Years ago on Saturday Night Live. <laughs> Will Ferrell did an impression of Harry Carey, who was a famous baseball announcer and a huge alcoholic. And uh, since I was young, I could do a spot on Will Ferrell impersonating Harry Carey. So it's a uh... high stand. <laughs> Let me ask you something. If the boat was made of spare ribs, would you eat it? I would. Do you I like hot dogs? Seconds. Is the moon made of cheddar? <laughs> See, there's like I know exactly what you're talking about. Ten people, like in the world, still know <laughs> who who that is. So, I want to see Mister Just Right with his big lip down there. He's making the sad lip. What are you making I'm, the sad lip for? I'm reading the comments. People are nuts. I, I, <laughs> I want to see your your impression. Ready, go. It hits like a truck full of dildos. <laughs> the that's, the easiest, ass. that's the easiest one to do right there but probably one of my favorite personal friend of mine what's going on youtube vaping with twisted 420 has returned and now he's doing all the edits the chops in it so it's like vaping with twisted 420 has returned he's chopping and screwing it now Shit, I know we're from Texas and all, but come on now. Shit. My my favorite twisted <laughs> moment was when he goes, What's going on, YouTube? <laughs> the vaping with Twisted 420 has returned. <laughs> I don't think he was in key though, there, Demo. You, you, you're too much in key for that, that impression. <laughs> so, so, all right, we're at an hour. <clears throat> Time out. Wait a minute. We got a new guest on the show. We got to ask him the, the infamous question. Has, t- tell me one of y'all has come up with it. The infamous question. All right, guys. So here's the deal. Hold on. First, first and foremost, let me check. Let's see how many viewers we got. 47 viewers watching now. That means that we are still in for the giveaway. If you guys want to win a show it. Hold on. Let me present you. Show it. If you guys want to win one of these awesome Fire Luke mesh tanks, Go ahead and stay in the video. If we keep it above 43 viewers is what we were at earlier when I said it. Then we will give that away at the end of the video, which is in just a little bit. If we get to 100 viewers and we stay there, he will give away two. One purchase directly out of his pocket. And I'm not saying that he said that earlier. So um, I'm not, yeah, I'm not just putting it. it I'm yeah, not just putting it. it saying, that's saying, hey, you're going to buy a fire leak mesh for everybody. Um, Not for everybody. Shit, I said two. <laughs> for everybody, 100 Fire Luke meshes. You get okay. a Fire Luke. You get a Fire Luke. 
Everybody and now Nick's doing Oprah Winfrey. <laughs> All right, so <clears throat> let's talk. Let's 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 jump in chat. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and ask our guests the question. I want everybody in chat to go ahead and put some kind of question in there. Um, anything you want to hear from us? Hell, I don't even care. It could be personal. It could be about coils. It could be about tanks. Don't make it too intrusive. Um, you know, like what color my underwear are. Uh, but maybe you know what color underwear do i prefer sure um you know those kinds of questions any kind of question you want to put in the chat go ahead and put them in there and we will get to those while we ask the question the famous question um ferrari or porsche nick no i'm just kidding um, oh, fuck. don't do that again please <laughs> I'm sorry, it was don't do that again. i'm sorry i'm sorry no, no um ninjas or ninjas are pirates right we gotta we gotta ask uh, that one at least ninjas or pirates yeah, oh, but pirates. I want to come up with a good. All right, all right. I've got a better one. Boxers or briefs? Since you asked what color underwear you wear, boxers or briefs? I wear boxer briefs. Or boxer briefs? Yes, thank you. I do too. And specifically, <laughs> Duluth Trading Company Buck Naked. That is the <laughs> best underwear on the planet. I will happily pay twenty dollars a pair because I've never been so comfortable. I've lived three hours away from Duluth. Oh well. Do you really? I do. Oh, I've got a good one. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Y'all ready? Nick, here is the question. We always ask our guests a question, and we ask them, today's question is mullets or mutton chops? Oh, mutton chops all day. And you must explain. So <laughs> I have a uh, – I, I, I hate mullets. I grew up in the 90s, and that was when – they should have stayed gone. But where I live, there are people who still believe that the mullet <laughs> or the rat tail is still a qualifiable haircut for 2018. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, mutton chops are killer, man. Kent from Twisted Messes, he has probably the most glorious set of mutton chops. Um, every once in a while, I'll shave everything down and do mutton chops. I'm completely down with the chops. But no mullets ever. Ah, oh, okay. All right. Well, you're you're. I, I'll put you down for mutton chops. All right, Mister Just Right. <clears throat> mutton chops or mullets? I'm gonna go with mullets. Okay. I'm gonna have to go with mullets, and the reason I'm gonna go with mullets is because. The long hair. Uh, believe it or not, I am a very religious individual. I may not come off as one, but I really am. And I do believe the strength comes from your hair, such as, you know, the whole Bible story and whatnot. We can get into that later. But that's Sunday at noon, by the way. <laughs> but yes, I'm going to go with mullets. Mullets all day. Mullets. All right. You, well, you can perm ahead. a mullet. You can't perm mutton chops. You can put a perm oh, in a mullet. A glorious perm with a mullet. Yes, you can. So it's definitely, definitely mullets. Yes. Let it shine. Dude, a little mullet jerry curl action. Oh, mm. yes, sir. Y'all remember coming uh, to America? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Showing your age. Showing your age. All right, guys. So um, since Demo jumped out. Oh, there he is. Demo. He's, he's got a mouthful of whatever it is. Yeah, I'm, and I'm, I'm going to ask him wanna... mutton chops or mullets, Demo. Mutton chops, because I could grow mutton chops. And mullets, I would have a real nasty mullet. Let me tell you what. <laughs> be real gross. Your mullet would be awesome. No, it wouldn't. I would be completely bald up top here, and I would just have this, like, gross mane of, like, thin hair. Disgusting. <laughs> it would be like the, uh, does anybody remember Freaks and Geeks? No. Okay. There uh, was a Janet in one movie I saw that was like that. So there was, uh, I know what you did last summer. That screen movie that, that damn, uh, the parody to scary, scary movie, scary movie. Yes. Yeah. If, <laughs> if I had a mullet, that's what that would look like. I'm like, <laughs> I mean, you can even, I've got, you know, I, I, my, I always, my hair is 50% loaded and then I lost connection somewhere up here. So that's why I'm like, I got lost. You know what though, you guys have like you guys have beautifully round heads though. Man, like, I got a watermelon was, on these shoulders, dude. 
if you guys had if if there was a head to ever be bald it would be you guys because it's just like it's just so nice if i ever shaved i've shaved my head one time all right i've shaved my head one time and i have like this I, I, my head looks like a freaking aliens trying to crawl out of it or something it is ridiculous now i have I have a super huge forehead. <laughs> Put that back on. But I've had I've had the receding hairline, huge forehead thing my whole life, so I'm pretty sure my hair is okay. I'm pretty sure I'm safe. Um, for me, I know you guys probably think I'm gonna go with mutton chops, but I'm totally going with mullets because the '80s and the early '90s, and uh, <clears throat> also I used to rock a freaking glorious mullet, and. I mean, I'm talking like it gets to here and then it starts to curl action. Oh, my God. Oh, dude, with a spike in the front and, you know, a little bit of party and a little bit of business. Only I was all party. It was awesome. Um, and that's, dude, I, I, I love me a mullet. <laughs> I love me a good mullet. And I love me anybody that can rock a mullet because you know what? If you can rock a mullet in out in the world and not give a crap about anybody that's laughing at you, you're my kind of person. So... Mullets is where it's at. Mutton chops is too much uh, 1800s. Uh, you can never take our freedom type stuff for me. Um, so that's why I'm going with mullets. I All right, well, let's take the heart guy. Oh. Some people said that they rock mullets in kindergarten and whatnot. Guys, I had to have a rat tail. My mother made me grow a rat tail. <laughs> I absolutely hated that damn thing. One day, out of the blue, being defiant as I was, I just got a pair of scissors and I cut the damn thing off. And my mom was heartbroken. She put it in a freaking envelope. I'm like, mom, that's freaking weird. Do not put my rat tail uh. in a damn envelope. <laughs> and my brother was next. My brother's like, dude, you cut yours off, cut mine off. So I cut his off too and took the whooping for both of us. So. <laughs> so so Mr. Dandy just asked, what about a man bun? No, get out. And yeah. uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll just take a mullet over a man bun any day. The only person no, no. I will be okay with a man bun with is Jason Momoa. Other than that, I was no. gonna say Turbo. <laughs> Does he have a man bun now? I've been, I've been. I, I don't know. I don't know. He's been no. rocking the hair up. And Turbo, back. Turbo actually just commented on uh, your uh, thing from Instagram last week. Mine? Yeah, yeah. Your what your you post. Say? You said, "Damn, I missed it." And this was for the one from last week, I think. Oh yes, uh, you got to give away a freaking og vape. Uh, or no? Oh, no, thir thirteen hours. Yes, thank you. Thank you. 13 hours really? ago, not last week. Boop, boop, boop. I, just told, I just told him that we're still rolling. So, Oh, I didn't even see like hit him. Uh, no, Turbo 818. I think it's Turbo 818. 616. Right? 616. Yeah. Um, he, he can rock a man bun because he's uh, he ain't got nobody to impress. You seen that lady he's, he's with? Oh, like, dude, don't talk about somebody's lady. Dude, Turbo knows that Pandora is super, super hot. Okay. He knows it. And he knows everybody thinks it, and he knows <laughs> he knows it. All right. If Real you're talk. with a woman, if you're with a woman that is extremely good looking, you know it, and there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not yes, being babe, you're wonderful looking. I promise. No, no, I promise. You're beautiful. I promise. promise. <laughs> yeah, dude. It's it's all. Okay. <laughs> you're give me beat up, dude. Just give, I just see a shadow of a fist. Okay, we're just giving him <laughs> it over. If there's like watching, a knife. Bro, there's, we're just giving you shit. <laughs> there's like a knife shadow coming across the wall. Thanks a lot, Pandora Turbo. Appreciate it. <laughs> Dude, actually, two of the coolest, Pan, funniest Pan people Turbo. ever. Oh, yeah. They are cool I, as hell in person. Yeah, I met had the Pandora, at both of them. Pandora at some vape event. And guys, I didn't even know who the hell she was. She was super friendly, very talkative, very outgoing individual, cool as shit. I didn't even know who she was. And then I get home and She's I'm like... She's like two oh, feet God. shorter in real life than you would think she is. She's all over damn Instagram. <laughs> I was like, well, hell... I never even knew who she was, man. So, very, very cool person. Yeah, I absolutely. like cool guys. I met Turbo at the bar in Dallas, Dave Showcase Dallas. We chatted a little bit. Cool, cool, cool dude. And he remember somehow remembered me from from that. Um, I walked up to him in St. Louis, and he was like, "Hey, man, what's up?" Like he like recognized me, and I was like, "Oh shit, like, you meet." Dude, you that's one cool thing about him. He, he remembers you. You, <clears throat> you buying yeah. drinks again? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. Totally. Um, so yeah, we got some questions. Um, I did also want to mention very briefly, just kind of kind of talk about. I know we kind of got off this topic, but I kind of wanted to talk about building for a mech versus building for a regulated. 
Yeah, go ahead. I'm going to just, just so everybody knows, I'm going to um, kind of be out of paying attention for a second because I'm going to go ahead and run the giveaway for my Ogvape Boreas Gold RTA from my review. Um, so if you guys can get a comment in on that video before I run it in the next 30 seconds, then you'll be in it. So I'm going to run it in just 30 seconds. And Timo, go ahead. <laughs> But don't leave. <laughs> um, I'm not leaving. I'm still, I I'm still here, but if I pick my nose, it's because I'm not paying attention. I met so. people in chat. But that's, Am that's I eligible oh, to win? Because oh. I commented on it. They'll come back. Um, okay. So building for mech versus building for um, building for uh, regulated mods. So regulated mods um, have amp limits and have voltage limits. And so when you build for a regulated mod, you can kind of build whatever you want, but it's best to stay within that, like, 0.15 to like 0.3 is like kind of the ideal space to stay in. Um, and, you know, not to say that you can't go past that or below that, but, you know, that's typically best for um, best for your mod, right? And so, and you'll get the best, the most broad range of performance from that. So, um, but with a mech, you're battling, because you can't adjust the voltage or the wattage rather, you're battling with the fact that, oh, I have this constant, um, constant uh god damn it king um those constant uh constant voltage so you have to build i typically like to build lower mass coils on a mech than if i'm vaping on a regulated because you get i don't know you just get much better performance you get that instantaneous ramp up and you know whatnot so that's that's kind of my uh my, my thing and so if you if you've ever you know built for a mech before and you're like ah, I'm just not getting the performance that I want, but you're building really big coils, you know, give it a try. Maybe build build some smaller coils. Always staying within the safety limits of your batteries and whatnot. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's kind of my little miniature mech mod versus regulated mod situation. The, the nice thing about regulated mods is that you can kind of just build however you want. So um, yeah. There you go. I have no take on the matter. I typically don't rock mechs, but some... Uh, you, got, you got a couple mech squawkers sitting right in front of you? Yeah, I, I do, and it's rather nice, and I really didn't start doing that until uh, I got some new batteries in. Once I got some new batteries in, it's been game time. <laughs> I can't wait till everybody sees the battery that's in this booger right here. It's not released yet. I was actually fortunate enough to get some. They actually valued my opinion. It's like, holy shit, you value my opinion? Little old Mr. Just Right One? They're like, shit, yeah, we value your opinion. You've been around for a long time, man. We definitely want your opinion on them. So I've been giving feedback on them and putting them through the paces. I will say, if you have not tried a 2700 battery or better, you owe it do to it. yourself to do it. Yes, because you remember, Stan, a couple of videos back, I told you I'd never used a 2700 battery. And I told you then to do it. Yeah, man. And I want to had, had these been available? Twenty seven hundred. Had these been available? I yeah, would for a little while. Oh, sorry. But they weren't available then, so I couldn't do it then. Demo, I want my twenty seven hundred parallel box. I, I want, want my it. dreamer. It ain't happened yet. <laughs> okay, guys. So <clears throat> I'm going to try this screen share thing, which I've never been successful at. Um, is that popping Bye, up? Bye, everybody. It's not going to work. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> is that popping up for you? Yeah, make sure to present yourself, though. Oh, sh well, shit. Hold on. Present to everyone. Okay. So is that popping up? That's yep. the winner right there. Luis Santos. I ran that. There he is. Boom. Winner is Luis Santos. He said, awesome review. Great job, Luis. Um, we actually, didn't see the randomizer. How do we know you didn't pick him? Oh, why? Why you got? Why you got to be like that? <laughs> why you got to be hey, like that? Hey, they do it to me all the time, so I figured I'd share the love. Oh, stop it! Fake conspiracy. You're all, you're all fired. Okay, so wait, what's happening? Stop! Stop! Wait! Stop! Hello? Yes. <laughs> Are you guys still there? <laughs> this is dog. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know yes, how this thing are. works. All right, there we go. We're back. We're back, and uh, everything is good. Luis Santos, congratulations. I will contact you uh, somehow. Thing, I think I have your email address because I think you did is a – uh, I don't know if he's here, but it doesn't matter. He'll see this video eventually. Um, 
I think you ordered some stuff off lucidrda.com. So, so that's how you very, pick very your winners. Very, very cool. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> shall we, shall you we know what? Some... That would be a great way to sell some stuff off lucidrda.com, though. Shall we get some uh, some questions going here? Absolutely. Okay. Ask me one question you want to ask me. I don't give a shit what it is. Where we already have some for. up here, actually. Ask me. I uh, have some questions. No, no, no. Just in general, <laughs> we have some questions up here. It says, Jeff Sneed asks, have you ever seen a real-life chain baitism? Don't know what that is. He keeps talking about chain stuff. I don't know what he's talking about. You into some BDSM stuff, man? I don't know. Yeah. Um, that's probably some kind of inside Jeff, joke with just him. Yeah, Jeff. If <laughs> Jeff, if you want to clarify that, we'll come back to that. Um, what color do you prefer, Stan? I guess what color? Jeff? What do I prefer? Pink? No underwear. You asked them what color underwear you like to wear. They you said you could. They could ask you that. What color underwear I do I prefer? Yeah, you told them they could ask you, and that's what they're asking. Honestly, I don't really care what color the underwear is. <laughs> they all turn out brown. <laughs> oh boy um, Billy Vapes Hard says what's everyone's favorite setup to vape on ooh that's such a hard question especially ask Nick first oh man so I, I'm, I'm very divided because I, I absolutely love mouth to lung so uh, the Nautilus on any regulated box period that's one of that's my favorite mouth to lung setup. So in this case, drag with the Nautilus. If not, um, I really like using the original recoil on uh, my Hexo uh, V3 uh, is the the version, I guess. Um, and it, it's just a good vape. It's warm enough, and you know, it's just a adjust for uh, flavor kind of thing, and it it gets me what I want. Cool. Um, for me, sorry guys, I'm eating dinner at, while, while I'm doing this. Um, <laughs> for me, I know, right? For I, me, I could have gone, but I wanted to like interrupt <laughs> your dinner. Oh, really? Well, <laughs> um, I that changes so much. Um, typically, I'll just kind of break it down to a gen general thing. I like a parallel box, unregulated or mech, um, with a RDA on top running about a 0.11 ohm build, typically alien frame staples, um, or these interlocks that I made are just killing it. I love it. Um, so that's that's kind of where I'm at. And, you know, the thing that I love about these particular coils and the coils that I build for Max is that they're, you know, let's see if I can show you. They're not giant coils, right? They're, they're smaller alien, smaller frame staple variants. But you press that button... And they just, you know, they ramp up nice and fast. And so you're able to kind of maintain some of that heat without uh, without sacrificing your flavor. What about you, Mr. Just Right? I'm at... Oh, he's muted. Oh, he's muted. Okay. Um, you for me, I'm, I'm along the same lines as you, Demo. I am going to generalize it as well because I've got so many things that I like so much. Um, I am exactly the same. I love an unregulated parallel build um, around a 0.11. Uh, unregulated, I like a 0.1 or so, 0.11. On a tube mech, I like a, pretty much any tube mech as long as it doesn't have crazy voltage drop. I don't really – voltage drop doesn't really matter to me. I just kind of adjust my draw accordingly. Um, I enjoy a 0.11 to a 0.13, 0.14, depending – uh, currently, I have a 0.12 in this Rebel on my Dreamer, and I have not taken these things apart in like a week. I absolutely am loving this vape. A Fuse Clapton, a Tricor Fuse Clapton, uh, all stainless or an Alien. I'm not really a staple kind of guy. I don't really like frame stuff. Uh, it just gets a little too hot for me, a little too much ramp up time. Uh, on an unregulated or a uh, mechanical, in my opinion. And Demo's making a smirk because he's like, wait till you try mine, Stan. Wait till you try mine. It might be a little hot for you. I got I got If you feel like a cooler vape, there might be just a wee bit hot for you. You know what, if man? I'll put, it, regulated, though. I'll put it on the Bonza and I'll, I'll just open that airflow up. I'm definitely Absolutely. excited to try them if you're, if you're that, uh, that hardcore excited about it. I am. So what about you, Mr. Just Right One? 
Well, first, first, my question before you get into the answering the, the question of the day, what is uh, how far down on that Everclear are you? Uh, the cup has been finished. It's done. <laughs> I actually had my son bring me my Red Bull. I filled it back up with some Red Bull and drank that Red Bull as well, just so I have plenty of energy to make it through the night. <laughs> Don't want to waste any of that stuff. Hate it to go to waste. So uh, it's done. That, that's just a fact. Uh, <laughs> Favorite build for me, guys, I'll be 100% honest with you. Done. Whatever I vape at, I want it to be at 4.2 volts. That's my ideal. I don't really even look at my reps. I just know that 4.2 volts is going to rock for me and go from there. Typically, like I said, uh, round wire builds to what's, start with. You now, what's your favorite do, setup, though? Like, what's your what's your favorite mod, RDA, all that kind of stuff? Uh, favorite setup? <laughs> the Bravo. Shit. Like, that's like... <laughs> The Bravo on that arc looks absolutely stunning. That does look good. Uh, second up, the CKS Stride, guys. I know it's like 2015 mod, but hands down, one of the prettiest damn mods I have. It's beautiful. Own. I love it. I actually found me a gold dead rabbit. So I had to put the gold dead rabbit on it. Uh, for those <laughs> of you that don't know, the Bravo is my favorite RTA. The dead rabbit is my favorite RDA. So... Gold. That's why I love gold. No, I like red, but nobody does red right. Like gold. these guys did it halfway right. Uh, the nudge red is freaking stunning, but all you get is just the nudge. Like you, the freaking nudge box is just black. I want red. Like give me red. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> and somebody asking the questions: red or blue? If you don't know yet, it's red. Red and gold. <laughs> red and black. Red and chrome. Red anything goes with me, hell, but red over blue any day. Except for that blue Bravo and that blue arc that I gave away. That was a stunning ass pair. I gotta give that set up. Yeah, that blue that looks one. good together, man. Uh Demo, I was gonna tell you th when you get the Bravo, because I know you got one coming. Yep. When you're gonna be impressed. I don't know if you're an RTA vapor, because I, I know I know a lot of people are like, Oh, I don't like RTAs. I like RTAs. Know. You're Goodbye. gonna be impressed with the Bravo, man. Sorry, it looks good. I've watched some reviews on it. I've kind of broken my rule where I try not to watch reviews on it. But you yeah. know, I didn't. Somebody when I, said when I was, they stay. Go ahead. Well, I was saying when I when I look at like I watch reviews. I don't care about that rule uh, because things don't phase me. Like somebody's opinion isn't gonna change what I think about something. And I know that you probably think the same way, but uh, I don't get influenced. Oh, that I know easily. that I can get influenced, so that's why. I yeah, I don't. Get, I don't get influenced that easily by somebody's opinion, mainly because I'm one of those people that thinks the opposite of somebody just to argue. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but the the looking at all the Bravo stuff and the pictures and everything, um, I wasn't really like, oh, you know, I think it's cool looking, but vaping on it. I'm going to save it for the review, but you're going to be impressed. That's all I got to say. Cool. All right. I'm down. I'm, I'm, I'm going to spoil it for you guys. Vaping on it is the best best damn RTA I've ever vaped on. <laughs> I'm spoiling it right now. I'm going to say it. I don't we care. shall see. You know what? Said, Just because you said, I, said I hate it. it. I hate it. Opposite. I hate it. Let's argue. Go. Huh? <laughs> Just <send it> back. <laughs> <laughs> there are more questions before we go on to a tangent. Oh, uh, yeah. Somebody, asked, somebody said they live in California. Crip life, man. Look, I don't gang bang. That's something I need to clarify. Somebody said, "Oh, he's got to be a gang." I'm not a gang banger, man. I'm a grown ass man with kids, responsibilities, and a legit nine to five job. I don't do no gang banging because gang banging don't pay the bills. I love green. That's my favorite color, money. But red in the meantime. So, yeah. Um, Just to clarify. What is the <laughs> smallest outer gauge wire you've used for staggered fuse Claptons? Well, I'll, I'll go ahead and answer that. I've used 40 gauge is the smallest I've done for that. That's uh, the smallest I've used right, uh, for, uh, for fuse claptons. I've never built anything else other than fuse claptons. <laughs> Mr. Jandy, I know it was a joke, brother. I don't take nothing personal, guys. I really don't. You can say whatever you want. You're not going to hurt my feelings. I don't take it. I'm a cut up guy, dude. I really am. All right. Let's see. Blue or red? Um, Jack Savage. Yes, I have been eating all night, and that's because I eat slowly. <laughs> Got to save with a flavor. <laughs> Uh, and also, I just don't want to be on this video like, Argh! you know, just like stuff in my face. Do it. We need something entertaining to see. I know. I know. Um, but no, I was over here dancing. That wasn't entertaining enough. 
<laughs> no. It would be if you had some rhythm. I'm changing my name to J-Mo. <laughs> J-Mo. Oh, my God. Um, you have T-Mo the... and N-Mo and Nemo and all the other guys. Hey, uh, Mr. Dandy asked if the nudge just whistled. Sorry. I saw that, and I Let's think that's see. an interesting question to answer. Uh, on the 22 or 24? Both. It sounds like it's right there, like it Almost. wants to. That's a 22. That's on the 22 with the big opening. Yeah, because they send you two top caps with it. That's with the larger diameter opening. This is on the 24. Yeah, the 24 doesn't whistle, but the 22 sounds like it wants very to. Very sharp. Like they're very sharp sounds, but that's okay. Um, let's see. We've got some other ones. Let's see here. Uh, do we have the B2K? I did just get it. I haven't set it up yet. I have one. When I heard B2K, I thought of that group from like the early, late 99, early 2000s. Yeah, so did King Chrome. Chrome says, wasn't B2K a group? Yes, it was a group. <laughs> they didn't do well. Joel tried out for that group. Um, there's a video on YouTube if you go looking for it. Mr. Just Right uh, sings um, Backstreet Boys for B2K tryout. Search that. <laughs> What's your best? They wanted 22... to accept me because I was from Texas. <laughs> What's your best twenty-two millimeter single coil RDA? That would be twenty-two millimeter single coil RTA. The Entheon for me. Ooh, I like the Entheon. It's expensive. It's very good. Um, I'm trying to get through RTA. Oh, uh, oh sorry. RDA. RDA. Sorry, RDA. My bad. Okay. I don't have many. Um. I have the B2K, which, I mean, if it's the same person asking that question that asked about the B2K, the B2K is definitely worth it, in my opinion. It's 60 bucks, and you get so much with it. It's ridiculous. And the flavor, I just put a battery in here. That's not a real low. Uh, that's like a .1... What is that? Like 0.15 single coil? That's a low single coil, bro. Is it? Or yeah. shit. Here, let's check it. Um, it. However, it's it's on a VTC 5A, and oh, it's a fine. really, really yeah. nice, really nice flavor. Really nice airflow. No whistling. Uh, really nice quality RDA. Another single coil 22 millimeter that I like is uh, – that's a 0.14. Another single coil wow. RTA, RDA that I like is the Pulse 22. Mm. Fantastic I never, I never, little I never RDA. Could dig it. I don't know. Really? A little you too like much airflow, it. and I like never quite got the flavor that I really wanted out of it. You know what? I do. I cut down to one one hole. But even when I do that, pulse. I get a weird. It's I don't know. Like I, uh, it's one of those ones that seems really sensitive to how you build it, and so like to the height of the coil and like all that kind of stuff. For me, anyway. I have never used a single coil RDA, um, so I don't have any input on that. But when everybody was talking about the B2K, I was interpreting that as BTK, which was a serial killer from several years <laughs> back. So that's <laughs> that's immediately what I went to. So that you don't I like horror movies. That. <laughs> that is, uh, I I have a story about horror movies for. A, a digression time, but but no, I've I've never used a uh, single coil twenty two millimeter RDA. I'm not opposed to it. So if you have any good suggestions, I will uh, see what I can do about picking one up and giving it a shot. Well, right there, bro. Man. I don't even care about ruining the uh, ruining the review. B2K. I am all aboard the B two K. It's also not super expensive. I think it's. I love the price. Fifty five, sixty five bucks. It's sixty dollars shipped. Yeah, it's and not you get bad. Four caps, four drip tips. No, eight drip tips, four drip tip adapters. The um eight the deck is, yeah. You get eight drip tips. You get eight small drip tips for the adapter, and then you get. I'm sorry, you get four small drip tips for, with the adapter, and then four wide board drip tips without the oh, adapter. Shit. Wow. Um, they're inside the caps. So you don't see it when you open the question. box. Uh, one device, one Addy, one juice forever. Coils don't matter, neither does cotton. 
What's the setup you bring into the apocalypse? Oh, I like that one. I, there is, I bring into the apocalypse. I'm gonna go ahead and take over on that one with this real, real fast. Okay, the go for it. Setup I bring into the apocalypse is going to be my Ark and Bravo juice that I'm bringing into the apocalypse. I would say Northern Lights Vapor Company because hands down, I love the hell out of that juice. But that has changed as of lately. Yes, it has. And I would go with Ice Monster Melon Culotta. Yeah, I said it. That shit right there is like the best in the world. I could make that for forever. Okay. Uh, Simple. Oh, dude, that's easy. That is a recoil uh, M17 by Axis Vapes. Rest in peace. And uh, Yig by Grim Colt. Um, that is my all time favorite juice any day of the week across everything uh from the first time i had it i've probably vaped five gallons of it total like i i had a serious problem where i would go through a 60 in about a day two days Ooh, that's a lot yeah yeah it was a very expensive habit um well, for me, since Stan is muted, um, for me, I would say any kind of parallel box, um, purely just because of the fact that I think that a mech would be nice to have in the apocalypse, because you know it doesn't, you know, it's you can bang the sh- you can bang the hell out of that, and you know it'll fire and you know whatnot. Um, and uh, ah, man, I don't know, uh, probably the reload, reload one point five. That would be my thing for juice. I would go with surf satisfying. I think that's probably my favorite, my favorite juice of all time. Stan, you're still muted, Stan. Sorry. Um, okay. So my, if we're talking about apocalypse, I'm not going to go with my favorite vapes. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, what's most suited for an apocalypse in my opinion. And what am I? Am I quiet? Why no, are you doing that? Oh, um, we're listening. We're paying attention. <laughs> for me, it, my <laughs> best setup for okay, we'll start with juice because that's like absolutely one hundred percent tank sauce pear ball. I absolutely love tank sauce pear ball. I don't have any right now, and it breaks my heart. I haven't vaped it in like a month, and it's killing me. But I love tank sauce pear ball. Um, if you haven't tried it, you should. Also, any tanks, all shit. It's all good. Um, for a mod, I would definitely have a mech. And if I'm thinking of a mech, okay, I'm gonna think of. I'm gonna. I'm gonna come up. I want to say the Dreamer, but I'm afraid that the Dreamer mech, the springs. I mean, what do you do in a couple of years if the springs? You get extra springs, so it'll still be good for a few years. Uh, so do you what, what's better in apocalypse springs or magnets magnets can break easy man magnets can break easy you know what you can make springs out of whatever i'm going with uh i'm going with the we'll, we can find scrap metal to make springs i'm going with the dreamer with tank sauce and i am not going to go with the lucid even though i love the lucid i'm going to go with something more simple what am i going to go with Oh, uh, RDAs. I mean, shit. Give me something. Good. <laughs> I take that's back hard. Mine too, guys. I want to restate because he just re- did say the apocalypse. I'm going with uh, my OG Manhattan. Yeah. This I think right. a mech I mod is the best that battery for... and Use it as a weapon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, this overpowered mod would be yeah. like freaking oh, the hammer. <laughs> It would be awesome. Sorry, I had to interrupt that. Sorry about oh, that. No, no, no a sorry, mech mod, in my it. opinion, is the best. For, <laughs> uh, I wanted to say a uh, an a-, a comp life HK because you just thread it in, and there's no like gadgetry to make up for the battery rattle or anything. But you're still using magnets. I guess you could replace them with springs. Um, but I'm gonna say the Dreamer just because what issues you would have with the HK, you'd have with the Dreamer. So I'm gonna say the Dreamer. And uh, uh, for RDA, I've just any kind of four post RDA 
Um, not anything with clamps or anything because just in case the clamps break or something happens, I'm going to go with screw based, a screw based, uh, or hell dude, that new, uh, that new spring loaded clamp, uh, not the Ampus. What's that other one? The, the Morpheus, coil. the Tiger the Tech Morpheus. Morpheus. You know what? I, I don't even know anything about that RDA, but I think in in the apocalypse, I think springs is the way to go because I think you can make springs out of found steel. So, um, if my okay. mod fucks up in the apocalypse, I'm not worried about it. I'm worried about eating. Right, right, exactly. I'll I'll get off my nicotine addiction for the apocalypse. Um, <laughs> Speak for yourself. Right. Um, okay. Let's. We've got some more questions. Let's kind of fire through these so that way we can get a kind of get 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 rolling here. Uh, what's the highest wattage you guys vape on? Uh, 150 watts for me. Sometimes if I'm vaping a series build, um, that's that's as high as I'll go. Uh, I've, I've for, never felt the need to vape any higher than that. Hold on, I'm gonna go ahead, Nick. Uh, 100 125 watts uh, is the highest or hottest I've ever vaped. Um, I haven't had the need to go over that, so. I, and I, I'm even now I stay around between 75 and hundred Watts. Mr. Just right. Man, guys, I'm a wimp. I don't go over 90 Watts, hundred Watts max. I'm not a fire breathing dragon, <laughs> but you could be. I don't want to. Be. <laughs> well, uh, I'm good. I really just a hundred Watts guys is most I ever gone. Really. That's just true. The highest that I vape would probably be in the upper 100s to 200 just because of the stacked builds that I build uh, that I run low on mechs. But that's the only time I vape that. Usually I don't vape over 100 or 110 on anything else. So um, I know that an 8.4 build on like a 25 amp battery, it says on the calculator 210 watts. But I mean, I'm not real sure. So there's voltage sag and stuff or battery. Yeah, sag. exactly. So probably mid one hundreds to you know 150 to 170 uh on something like an 8.4 volt build on a stack, but that's the only time I ever vape that high. So All it's eleven oh four, my time is money. No. I'm gonna start talking <laughs> not a minute afterwards. <laughs> no, it's about um, that time. It's about that time. Got some more? Just can we, can we get through some no. more of these questions? <laughs> let's answer. Let's answer three more questions, and then we'll check the watch count, and we will pick a winner for the giveaway. All right. All right. All right. So I do. I did want to look at this one though. Any vape, anyone vape a series mod? How does one build on this, and what are the benefits there are with a series mod? So. Um, <laughs> Demo wait, DM. DM. No, I'm fine. <laughs> I'm just joking, guys. Um, Say that question again. Okay. Yep. Uh, anybody? Anybody vape a series mod? How does one build on this, and what benefits are there with a series mod from Ivica or Ivica? Um, I am very familiar with that, but go ahead, Demo. Uh, so I'm not a huge series vapor. I do have several series devices, but um, you know, as far as the benefits of it, you typically use thinner wires to get the resistance that you need for series. Um, which then in turn creates a ridiculously fast ramp up and a ridiculously hot vape. Now that all depends on what kind of resistance you're doing. But uh, you know, for me, when I build series, I'm building 0 0.3, 0 0.35 and it's a blitz blazing hot vape. Um, and I like that, but you know, it's, it's, I like, I like it for that. You know, you get the full 8.4 volts, you know, and, and whatnot. Uh, I, I typically more like a parallel guy. I like the lower resistance builds. It's just basically a different way to get to the same place. You know, the builds, the vape is a little different. Um, but yeah, that's kind of where I'm at with that. I build differently on a series uh, stack. I build, uh, I build thicker gauge wire, like 20 gauge, 22 gauge, and just use a massive coil. Um, I usually use about a canthal or something like that. I get from a 0.3 to a 0.5, depending on <clears throat> what batteries I'm using. Uh, and honestly, I, you know what, I'll put together a, <coughs> I'll put together a build right now with half charged batteries just to show you the type of vape I normally get. But, uh, the, I don't, I don't run a super, super hot, crazy fast build like Demo does, like he's talking about. Uh, I use a I use a bigger gauge wire and I get the kind of vape that I like. But you get 
I mean, it seems like it's not it's not mathematically or um, supposedly you're not supposed to get better battery life when you run series, but it seems like you get better battery life. So, hold on, I'm putting together my overpowered mod in twenty one seven hundred here, and then I've got my Omega thirty millimeter right here. How do they bring mods? Put the amp draw cost for batteries. So the this is a stack. Well, shit. Hold on. Yeah. <laughs> this is the stack mod I've been running recently with twenty one seven hundred uh, batteries in it, and this doesn't get crazy hot. This RDA. I'll tell you what the what the uh, these are twenty twenty one twenty two amp batteries. I think Battery Mooch said these are the actually no Battery Mooch didn't do these, did he? These are the VRK 21700s. And these are running a point. I'm running a 0.43 on them. So if somebody wants to run a calculator, they can tell me exactly what the, the amperage is a lot. on fully charged batteries. I'm sure it's less than that because these batteries aren't fully charged. But here you go. I'll give you I'll give you a little cloud action so you can kind of see. <clears throat> Twenty hours later. So that's not a uh, right. <laughs> asshole. So that's not a full. <laughs> that's not a fully charged mod, and that's not a hot vape at 0.43 on a uh, stacked 8.4 volt mod. All right. So there's different ways to vape, like like he said, different ways to get to where you want to be. Anybody else want to comment on that? <laughs> No. Okay. Um, okay. Cool. Dead, dead, dead. I don't. I don't do many mechs, guys. I really don't, especially in series. I mean, I got that drip tech uh, stuff, but well, that's parallel. That's, that's parallel. Not anyway, I'm about to say yes, they're parallel. I really just don't do series. I don't have many mechs. Period. I mean, I'm just. I wish they appealed more to me, but you know, it is uh, 2018. I want to move forward. Right. Right. All right, we got we got we got two more questions here to go until we're done. Um, what wire is the best flavor for you all? Stainless steel, Canfall, or Nichrome? We kind of took Delta on that earlier a little bit, but uh, Nichrome for me. I like Nichrome. Stainless for me. I like Nichrome. That's my go-to. Canfall for me. Okay. Cool. Boom, boom, boom. Next question. Next. Uh, let's see if we got any more. I don't know. I don't even know if we have any more. Let's see here. What's one RDA you bought more than one of? Is that, that is the question? Qu yeah, oh, was that was a question. Oh, okay. Yes, it was. Uh -huh. Goon. I've, I've done that a few times, actually. Me too. Goon, recoil, reload. Um, reload for sure. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven reloads. Good Lord. Yeah, I, I didn't even realize that until I counted up, and I was like, "Oh fuck!" I'm like that's way too many. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't, I haven't even used one. <laughs> so they're, very, they're really good. Um, you don't Monty, think Monty, that Monty is still waiting for his <laughs> that he won from me? Uh, I've been waiting for it from Reload. So my answer is a right. dead rabbit. I bought a mess. I bought a bunch of goons. I did. I'm shit. I bought a whole mess ton of goons. But the one I've probably bought the most of, because the goons I just bought different caps for, would be the dead rabbit. I've bought about seven or eight of them. I only own two of them, but I gave the rest of them away. I'm not a greedy mm -hmm. individual. I'm a giving guy. Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> I usually stop just at ask two my of wife. Right. <laughs> I usually stop at two of anything. However, I, I purchased six goons. Damn. All right. So we have reached. How many looses have you bought? How many looses have I bought? Over, you know, a few hundred, multiple hundreds. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's 11 11. Let's go ahead. Let's knock this out. Mr. Make Just wish. Right. Make a wish. Make a wish. Mr. Just Right. One, I want you to pick your winner. Wait, hold on. Let me check. We better have 43. 43? We have 49. 49. Go for it, Mr. Just Right. Give away that 
So what Mesh I'm doing is I'm just going through the RDX comments, and I'm just going to stop somewhere, and I'm going to pick somebody, and we'll go from there. Yeah, because it's impossible to do a ah, random there it randomizer. Is. Mr. Dandy, and his comment was, damn, 150 watts. I just went through there and just picked a comment, and that's what it was. Mr. Dandy. Woo! Mr. Dandy, you're the winner of the fire, Luke. Congratulations. Um, he will get in touch with you, and it is gold. So but you wait, guys we can go double or nothing. Not be fine. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. So uh, let's let's say good night. Go on through. Um, go ahead and give your uh, you know, plug yourself, plug what you're doing, and let's get out of here. Ready? Go, Nick. Uh, on YouTube, I am Doctor with a period amp. Uh, I, and I do reviews, and I have a bunch recorded, but I haven't put any out. Um, and then on Instagram, I am Doctor. Amp eight one five. Also, Big Boy B I C B O I eight one five is my personal shit posting account. So feel free to follow either one of them. Um, I'm going to be doing some stuff on there. I post try to frequently on Instagram, and if you need to get a hold of me through Instagram, go ahead and make sure you drop your links into the chat, man. Because yeah, this guy has like what, like 13, 13 subscribers on YouTube. Go follow, go follow Mr. Amp for sure. Go ahead, uh, Demo. All right, guys. Well, I've been Demo Vapes tonight. And, um, yeah, so I've got uh, some more awesome reviews coming coming up soon. Um, uh, let's see. I'll be at ECC Ontario with uh, Nick Bissett and Stan here. And Stan and I, Stan and I are rooming together. <laughs> <laughs> um, it'll be fun. And, uh, you know, so I'll go ahead and put my links down to my YouTube channel. If you haven't subscribed to me, please go ahead and subscribe. If you uh, liked what you saw tonight, my YouTube videos are much more edited and clean, high quality visuals and stuff like that. Um, I'm also going to throw a link to my Facebook group down there as well, uh, as well as my Instagram uh, at demo underscore vapes. Please go check that out. I'm also going to be doing well. I was I wanted to take an opinion from the room here. I was thinking about doing uh, an after show. So. If, uh, if anybody here would like to join me for that after show, you're more than welcome to. I actually just texted uh, Thesis. He wants to join in on the oh. after show. Oh. You actually talked to Thesis after all oh, the shit he talked about a Ferrari? <laughs> yeah, man. We were, he, oh, was just, he was just doing shit. I mean, <laughs> Joy, that's going to be fun right there. You guys should I go over it. to Demo Vape's channel and watch that after show. So, um, yeah. So there'll be that. So I'm going to go ahead and type all those things in. I will also provide a link to Steam Engine if you've never used it or don't know what it is. Go check it out because that is an awesome, awesome resource. One of the best resources we have. All right. Go ahead, Mr. Just Right. What if I don't want to go? What if I want to go? Don't go. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, gals, ladies, gents, it's been Mr. Just Right one tonight. Yes, I have. Uh, a lot of fun. Thank y'all for tuning in to Vape Stew again. Every Friday night, we try to get together and do this. Uh, I enjoyed being here. I'm glad these guys have me. Follow my YouTube. Subscribe if you would, please. Vaping with Mr. Just Right One uh, on, over on Instagram. One. I'm on a goal. I have a goal set of 1,000 followers on Instagram right now. I know that ain't much, but that's my goal. So y'all can go help me achieve that. When I hit 1,000, I will be doing more giveaways. I'm always doing a giveaway. If you don't know, I'm giving away something all the time. I promise you I am. And why? Because it's been afforded to me to do so. I absolutely love every single one of y'all. I am checking in and checking out at the same damn time. <laughs> all right, guys. If y'all are here, y'all obviously know uh, today's just TX Vapes. And stay tuned in, um, stay turned on, and hang out with me. There's more reviews coming this week and more giveaways happening. I will be a uh, little sneak peek, the Mace RDA, and I'm not using one. So that's happening this week. Um, Tenacious TX Vapes on Instagram, tenaciousTXVapes.com, lucidrda.com. And uh, I'm going to do you all a favor. Inside the chat, I'm not going to tell you what it is, but inside the chat, I'm going to put a code – for 10% off and free shipping at lucidrda.com for this week and this week only. Uh, actually, screw it. Vape Stew Friday is the code for this week. Vape Stew Friday. If you watch this, you got all week long to get 10% off and free shipping at lucidrda.com. And if you're looking for a black dreamer, it will happen this week. So you guys have a fantastic day, fantastic weekend. 
I'm gonna go hang out with my wife for a little bit because it is our 10 year anniversary. You guys, Bravo. yeah, the, we, we see the Bravo. We see it. We see it. You guys stay safe. You guys have a fantastic rest of your weekend. And remember, vape on, friends. Yes, let's vape get on. Out of Happy here. anniversary, man. Happy anniversary. Thank you, sir.